Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And this is Jarrett with Believe in the Run. Could you hold that closer to your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> you did, you, did, you weren't enthusiastic about it, though. I will say that. Yeah. Like, for a guy who's, like, hanging on by a thread yeah. to be on this show. Be honored. Yeah. Like, let's see a little excitement. <laughs> I, you know, life is pretty tough right now. I'm a little tired. Everything hurts. Just, oh, someone cut me. I win a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> How many people have you told that you're, so, you're super sore because you ran yesterday? Yeah. Two days ago. Allie. Okay. Allie and Jordan. Like, have you told Jordan? Jordan just looks at you blankly and she's like, but yeah, you've still much. told her. Your yeah. daddy ran Boston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. She knows. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Intrinsically, she knows. You said your lower back hurts. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, What's God. going on with your lower back? I ran a marathon. Yeah. Do, do you get back pain during marathon? Not. Do, I mean, Actually. I get all kinds of pains. Like right now, from neck down, my body just feels like really rough. Uh-huh. But I think when the heat and the, the stuff, like it's impossible not to get a little dehydrated and our muscles are going to be sore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just recorded our Feel for the Soul podcast and talked all about it. Mm. How we're all dehydrated yeah. and hurting. Mm. We're, and we're also in Thomas's house and, yeah. and Megan's. I don't know we, why. <laughs> yeah. Well, she gets to stay so, here from yeah. time to time. Is that okay. whose phone is that? Oh, sorry. Did, did you, <laughs> did you find, find another phone? phone? Uh, Are you about to yell at someone? Yeah. It was your phone. No, it was my uh, weekly. Damn co- it, Thomas! My, my weekly coaching call. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna go well. Um, uh, yeah. The, uh, I, I just say sorry and hang up. Yeah. Just <laughs> refer him to the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, we're in our house because. We are doing something exciting at the headquarters. We decided that it was too much of a pain the way that things were set up to do the podcast and the video reviews. So we are rehabbing. We're having tear out walls and building a new space specifically for video content and podcast content, mm-hmm. which is kind of exciting that that we feel like we're at a place where we need that. Yeah. Because otherwise, you know, it's the other direction. Yeah, <laughs> right. tearing down walls to destroy the space, yeah. the memories that we used to be in together. Yeah, I don't know. well, that got dark. Yeah, it was an emo turn into emo song. That's it's what like, happens yeah, that's what it when you listen like. to Taking Back Sunday for too long in the early aughts. So we we uh, we did just get back from Boston, and some of the exciting stuff, I thought some of the best stuff was running into people. Yeah, can we before we dive into all the fun stuff, just shout out to one of our sponsors? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so Thomas, you forgot your pillow again. I didn't forget it. I just we had so much stuff in the bags, and <laughs> like I it. already had like it looked like I had a a person in my bag. It was so big, like yeah, I was using that. Um, S- still, somehow wasn't as big as Jared's. I was gonna suitcase. say not even close. <laughs> Wait, what was the name of the the suitcase that I have? I always forget the name. Of. Ortlieb. 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 Yeah, that's it. And I love that thing, but it's it's cavernous and it's got the wheels. So I just. I packed it and I even brought another duffel bag just in case we got, because last year, there was one year that Megan and I had to go purchase another bag because we got so much swag stuff. Mm-hmm. And then this year I came back with the bag still in the bag. Yeah. Rough life Which, for you. It was actually kind of nice. I was glad I didn't get a ton of stuff because it's like, you know. Anyway, yeah. the whole point of starting this conversation was to talk about lagoon pillows. <laughs> Which you forgot. Well, no, I didn't or forget. Purposely didn't bring. Maybe if I'd had the travel uh, case for <laughs> it, it would have fit into my oh. suitcase. Otherwise, I would have had a full size pillow in there, and it just, I didn't, I didn't have space for that. Yeah, but since we are recording from the house, they're upstairs mm-hmm. in our bedroom. Want to go take a nap, Jarrett, until we finish this commercial? I mean, I I would like to. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Try to I, get pillows. I though slept probably the best I have in several days last night. So I'll give some credit to. I slept like Lagoon. a baby last night, eight yeah. hours plus really just out. Wow. Not, not me. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we'll give credit to uh, lagoon. And so we were offering the travel bag. Now anyone who makes a purchase can use the code believe and get 15% off your first order. So just go to lagoonsleep.com slash believe and take the quiz so that you find out exactly what pillow you want. Or the pillow that's best for you, rather. It's not a stress-inducing quiz. It's not. Like, it's actually not stressful at all. Yeah. Like, pop. It's not a pop quiz. Mm-mm. No knowledge necessary, except for self-awareness. Uh, pop quizzes were the worst. I was Because you were sitting there, and you're like, I'm going about my day. Yeah. And they're just like, let me sleep in class. Why do I have to do this? Well, <laughs> I, I feel bad because, like, the teacher was telling me that Theo doodles in class. Yeah. That's all I did. Okay. That, that that actually angers me because I 
for certain kids, I was the same way. Doodling is actually how I focus. Yep. Because you were concentrating and you could listen. Yeah. But if I just sit there, then I'll just like daydream into like some other atmosphere, stratosphere, other sphere. Like I used to. Like I am right now. If we would do, like when we were doing biology and stuff, we are talking about neurons and synapses and stuff. I would draw and I'd draw the myelin sheath over the nerve, yeah. you know, conductor and axons yeah. and all that stuff. And so I'd have like a illustrated version of what the teacher was talking about, but it used to drive teachers nuts because if you look over, he, the kid's just right. got his head down. That's crazy though. That's, that's, ins- that's by now you should know that that's fine. I mean, education in itself is crazy that we make young kids sit at a desk like, and you thought you were getting a Boston Marathon recap. Yeah. <laughs> but I agree with it's you. It's a PTA meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Can we please get active things for the kids to do? Yeah. Like yeah. running and training for a marathon. <laughs> Dude, I learned a lot of math doing uh, marathons. Every 30 minutes or 40 minutes taking a gel. You know, mm-hmm. need to, how many gels do you need? If you're going to run this pace at this long, how many gels is it take? Trying to That's figure out, math. Trying to figure out kilometer markings That's in the middle impossible. of a race. Math yeah. again. <laughs> So you could do all sorts of fun stuff with the kids. Be yeah. like, would you guys rather run two miles or two kilometers? Oh, yeah. The kilometers. They'll learn easy. kilometers real quick. I'd fail that pop quiz. <laughs> would you really? Do you yeah, not know which I, one's longer? I mean, when it comes to like what pacing with kilometers. Yeah, actually, you do have to hold it a okay. little higher. You don't so. have to pace. <laughs> it's just the distance. Yeah, but what's that? Like basic math? Then we're into algebra and we're talking about pacing. Okay, what's, stuff. It, what's longer, a kilometer or a mile? mile yeah so I if i said that. would you like to go run your kid now not someone trying to do an ultra would you like to run two kilometers or two miles what am i getting out of if i do two miles yeah <laughs> two yeah what like am okay. i getting out all of right. something else? this this i don't even know what's happening we might have to cut that <laughs> <sighs> got crazy Just keep you going all right let's go we're getting into the boston marathon recap so there's a lot of uh metric discussion but we're gonna get into i did the, like they had kilometers on the course they yeah. always do yeah, not every marathon. Every major. Okay. Yeah, you need to accommodate the international students. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> we're here, and all right, let's start with. Do you want to get just a give a timeline of our events, or yeah, we so we had a full weekend a slate of events. We talked about it on the podcast for weeks leading up to this. Yeah. Um. Basically, got got out of here on a Friday afternoon. Got into Boston. Pretty much just checked into the hotel and left. Yeah. yeah, put on our New Balance gear, headed over to Solus. 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 It's Solus. Solus. Yeah, the A is an a U, short U sound. Solus. Yeah. Uh, Sol Asylum. Irish pub. Runaway train. How'd you like the trivia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we promised people there would be trivia there, and there wasn't. I Th- still don't know what happened. The vibes were too good. No one wanted to ruin I think them. everybody was drinking after the uh, shakeout run, and like it's like trying to get people, all right, everybody sit down, let's play a board game. Yeah, the chicken tenders were flowing. Buffalo s- spoons were getting lost in the buffalo sauce, which was slightly disconcerting. Lost in the sauce. Yeah. Did you notice how all the sauces... You start out with spoons and they were all disappearing into the bowls. You know how they is slide that where they in? were? Because I was like, "Where's the buffalo?" No, they were underwater. They were drowning in right. sauces. Mm-hmm. And so at one point, I was having to use a celery stalk as a spoon. Uh, That's clever. You're like one of those monkeys that can learn. Yeah, it's a little MacGyver trick. I learned on <laughs> MacGyver. Um, <laughs> putting putting your grass down the ant hill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, that was a little stressful. But we, we got through it. Oh, I guess we should talk about what happened before the chicken tenders. Yeah, we, we did. We went sh- for a little run. run. We Meg, hit, Meg, give it away. Uh, we went for a run down to the river and back. Nice little out and back with a group of a few hundred of our friends. And it was very fun. It was a little windy. We were a little worried about that, but it worked out fine. It was actually kind of perfect. The only thing that wasn't great is our course that we set up, we ran towards the finish line, mm-hmm. which of course is a photo op and the yeah. tourist thing. So kind of bottlenecked a little bit there. But then we got out along the, is that the Charles? Yeah. We got out along the Charles and it was nice running. I talked to a few people. Jorge, what's up? Um, he's studying in Boston, mm. getting his master's. I forget in what, but. Okay. Um, Molecular biology. Probably something smart. Uh, and we ran with a few other people and it's just fun because, I, I don't know, like for you, like when you start talking to people and you realize, you know, they have questions about stuff that happened on the show or shoes or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just it's it's fun to just like be able to 
connect with the audience. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to one woman. It was the woman who you brought the hat for. The blue brown hat. Yeah, so I was talking to her and we were trading hacks on like how to game the system and it was actually pretty useful. Well, she got me to deliver a hat to her. She knows how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to share them because it's one of those things like on TikTok when you see someone like, "Hey, here's a hack everyone should do." And then you're like, "Well, you ruined that for everyone." Well, so thanks. Is this the hack that you told me? Yeah. Okay, I'm not telling anyone. I'll tell you guys. If someone wants a DM afterwards, I'll let you know, but I can't this announce it. Is this a life it, hack? Yeah, uh, this is one that's like a secret secret. Okay. Yeah. I have a feeling it's really not good. <laughs> Wait, Wait was it good, Jared? I, I, let's hear it, and then yeah. you can we can cut it out of the. Podcast. I'll just say I'll just say what it is, and it's how to win at raffles, like mm. tickets yeah. with uh, ticket raffles. Okay. Well, if you don't play, you can't win. And the other one is how to get great service on an airplane every time. Well, Jared the, just complained. Yeah, actually, Jared already. Yeah, he has that hack down. <laughs> it wasn't even complaining; it was requesting, like. With manners. Here, but here's the thing about you, Jared, that I think is frustrating and admirable at the same time. <laughs> like, I hate it, but it gets results. Mm-hmm. You are a nuisance. <laughs> yeah. A very nice nuisance, but you're a nuisance. You are not afraid to ask for, like, you're the guy that the Chick-fil-A hands out a sauce, and you're like, could I get one more, please? <laughs> and they're like, whatever. Okay. And yeah. then... Robbie, it, would you like to run out of Chick Fil A sauce while you're eating your nuggets and fries? Did you get well, enough to take home? Absolutely not. Yeah, I always take, make sure I have extras to take home. Um, that's just a life hack in general, but everyone knows that. <laughs> but Jared's that way with everything. Yeah, I, I get it. I, really, I think I'm I really not that like, far. <laughs> I really like those shoes. I'm not that far off from Jared. I just I think maybe hide it a little bit more where Jared's. No, you just even said that you didn't care that you didn't come back with a bunch of stuff from Boston. I think at another part of my life, I I would. Okay, so you think you'd be like Jarrett, where you're like, oh, yeah. is that for you? I'll take I'll take one of those, oh, dude. A hundred percent. I'll gladly pay you for a hamburger on 100%. Tuesday. hundred <laughs> percent. That's why when people get so excited about free giveaways, I'm like, I get it. Okay, I've been there. <laughs> Speaking of which, we gave out a bunch of socks after mm. the. I didn't. Um, I didn't even see them. Oh, we got a pair. Oh. I didn't get any, so I'll give you. I have an extra pair. No, I'm good. I'm good, Thomas. See. Oh. So. So at the new Baloney, Bal- he's taking so people socks, after the show. He's asking trucker hats, up. trucker hats for people that tried and demoed there was New a, Balance shoes. The trivia looked like they were giving away a couple of Garmin's yeah, and I stuff. I don't know who got those. I don't know what happened, but I mean, it was a pretty good time. There is a bunch the, of fluencers showed the up. The people were out and about. Yeah, yeah. Matt Choi. Uh, we had I think Laura Green, Ali Feller, Ali Feller. There was more. Alex um, Hermanson. Alex Hermanson. Uh, yeah. Ben, ben Johnson. Johnson. I think even Kafuzi Kira Popeye. Kira D'Amato stopped by and Kifuzi, said hi. Kira D'Amato. Meb was there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Meb's a New Balance athlete now. Yeah. That was crazy. So, I, I, get, I talked to his brother, Howie, who's his manager. Oh. And he said we could get him on the podcast. That would be Especially cool. Especially since we do stuff with New York Roadrunners. Yeah. Uh, and Meb's going to be doing a lot with the kids charity mm-hmm. for getting kids involved with the New York Roadrunners. Okay. So um, I think he will be a future guest. So if you have questions that you'd like to have answered by Meb, shoot them our way. Okay, cool. Yeah, that was that was pretty neat. I, I read in the Boston Marathon program, they had his recounting his story of his 2014 victory. and Dude, I still remember watching that. Ama- it was amazing. Yeah. Dude, watching him, you know that little bridge you go under and then back up? Yeah. I remember clearly seeing him coming out of that tunnel and looking backwards and Megan and I were like, oh my God, I think he's going to do it. Yeah. And like you saw the other guy and it's hard to tell when it is on TV because it flattens right. it. Right, yeah. But he had a pretty good lead and then it just got on Boylston. Yeah. And that was, it was, oh, I get the That chance. felt like a mountain this year. Yeah, was the underpass. underpass. Yeah. Didn't the course feel completely different than yeah. last year? So The worst it's ever felt. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, so the next morning, you guys ran a 5K. Yeah, yeah. I. it was a weird... That's a tough 5K. I, it, like, we just jogged it very Yeah, it was chill. a shakeout run-ish. Yeah. But it was, uh, it's so crap. It's like the first couple of miles of the Boston Marathon, but in a 5K. So it's like, the, you finally day. open up at like 
the third mile. I don't even know. I don't think it ever opened up. Not really. Yeah, I mean, when we got on Boylston Street, I felt like if you wanted to rip, you could rip. Yeah. You'd have to dodge people. Yeah. But yeah. Now, the first time we ran it, you didn't want to go under the... Um, didn't you run it with me before? Uh, the you, 5K? Yeah. No, you, I didn't do the 5K oh, okay. before. Because, like, you go under the finish line. I remember you were like, I don't want it. That's a jinx or something. Oh, I think that was when we were just walking around. Okay. Yeah. Um, last The last year, or, yeah, when we were there. So, yeah, the 5K was cool. We saw some people. We saw Runner Beans. Um, Charlie so, Watson. Yeah, Charlie Watson. So she ran with us for a while, and that was cool. And, you know, friendly friendly faces on the course. But it is pretty crowded. And if you ever do the BAA 5K, I would say – just don't think you're going to do a PR. And if you are, get like at the front. front. Yeah, like <laughs> like push Meb out of the way. Yeah. Like, because there's walkers starting at the, with the 530 pace, five I, minute pace. I tried That's to warn crazy. you guys. Did I do a good enough job letting you guys know that it was not? Yeah, yeah. you did. You okay. Because, like, it is the gun goes off and you think people are going to run mm. and they maintain the pace they had crawling up to the start line. Yeah. They, yeah, it was interesting. Walk. We were in the perfect spot though, because right when we walked to the like the actual start line, the finishers came and we got to see that. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So that was pretty cool. What about um, mm-hmm. Cooper Tier pulling through at one second ahead of Wow. Whoever was in second. I mean it was neck and neck through the shoot pretty much, almost. Okay, so you know Baltimore has some potholes. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of the Boston potholes? It, unbelievably, I think they're worse. There were some that were like a foot deep, it seemed like. And they're everywhere. And I get it because it's always it's cold snow and, and snow and right. thawing and freezing. But, man, like, <laughs> I thought for sure I was going to wreck my ankles on the days, one of the three runs leading up to the to the marathon because I'm like, we're, we're in crowd, always running with crowds with the shakeout runs. Up and, and the down race. curbs. Curbs, cobblestones, bricks, potholes, grass. It was dude it was like i don't know it was wild yeah so we after the 5k we uh quickly rinsed off oh yeah changed gear and headed to the new balance store Mm -hmm. a newberry which yeah that was cool that store is really just a cool store i love it um i like that with the view out the back window Yeah. yeah and so we went there just to sort of say hi to people and they were giving out custom singlets that you could have your name printed on. Now here's the crazy thing. We didn't announce ahead of time that the singlets would be free. Cause we were not aware. We, yeah. We thought, you had which I them. think uh, that would have driven a lot more traffic if we were allowed to say, Hey, the free singlets. I'm pretty sure we said that you had to buy them at some yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. I thought that's what and I was told. The singlets were dope. Yeah. I kind of feel bad. None of us got one of the believe in the run ones. You're kind of lucky that you didn't announce that it was free because I would have been in line. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. My, they, were, they were awesome. Wait, They're you know cool. my favorite part? Jared pulled a um, what's his name on the office worth the chili? Who had the chili? Oh chi- gosh! Kevin? Yeah. Oh yeah. Kevin. He pulled yeah. a Kevin in the middle of the store. His yeah. coffee went everywhere. So outside of the store, they were handing out bagels for breakfast and coffee, which is great. Which, like, I mean. For some reason, they weren't handing out tops to the coffee. Or napkins. but Or <laughs> napkins. And there were no trash cans inside the store. Okay? That is true. So we get in. I'm holding the bagel and then the wrapper in the same hand because I'm trying <laughs> to eat the bagel. And in the other hand's coffee. I somehow drop the wrapper and I go to grab it <laughs> with the hand that's holding the coffee. <laughs> coffee goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. All uh, over someone who was trying stuff on. I <laughs> profusely apologized to them. Wait, so like, you didn't even knock it over? You actually just poured it out? It was, <laughs> he told everyone, he had made an announcement <laughs> in the store and told everyone he got bumped. Yeah, so so I was <laughs> like, someone, someone someone, bumped into me. You are, and I, I was right behind him. I know nobody touched me. <laughs> yeah. This was a flawless execution. That sounds like a, a George Costanza Yeah, excuse. later I told Meg. I, I was Meg, bumped. No one bumped into me, yeah. and then you nearly lost it. Like but they, I, how I, I couldn't believe you made that up. So you well, know they have cameras in these stores. They can just go back and look at that okay, and see you're well, a liar. All the people <laughs> surrounding me don't have cameras. <laughs> Actually, they did. Uh, I mean, I got caught falling on a camera. Uh, that was, <laughs> that was that Friday Thursday, night. About Friday night, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 
Well, that's on video. Woo! Oh, okay. Woo! oh, that is a dip. That is a dip. Wow. Did you get that on camera? Like, yes, dude. <laughs> yes, it's, I've been rolling, dude. You weren't even drunk. No, you didn't have anything I didn't, to drink. I didn't, you know what? This was the strangest thing. I had no desire to drink, so there was no temptation for me. The t the two days in front of uh, Boston, normally, like I'll be like, oh, let me just have a glass of wine or uh, a beer to so yeah. soothe myself. I had no no desire, so we we're walking home. Wow! And one of the potholes got me. There was a <laughs> crack, and I started to feel myself go over. I was like, I could let my ankle twist, or I could kind of just go with the gravity. And uh, that one's probably. But you rolled so, straight into the road. Like yeah. if the car was coming, you would have been dead. Oh, yeah. for sure. Dead. Which also would have been helpful. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> think about the memorial you guys would have for me in Boston. Oh, we put a statue of you. Yeah, right. One block off Boylston, yeah. so no one would see it. <laughs> Everybody see it. I don't. They pilgrimage. <laughs> was there a pothole? Because Carl at no, New Balance it was, showed me. It was a um, like the whole sidewalk like just went under. Okay. Like it, yeah, you, it was very unlevel, like yeah. like three inches. Yeah, like yeah, like much. what happened was my foot went down into the hole, and my ankle started to give because it was like it was like a cement piece that had broken down at an angle. So my shoe went down. And I felt my ankle starting to twist, and that's when I was just like, just let yourself go. Yeah, you rolled like, right off the sidewalk into the street, was, into the yeah. left hand turn lane. Yeah, it was like slow yeah. motion too, because I was like, again, it was kind of like when you fell in the street. Yeah. And I'm like, what? I couldn't compute what was happening. <laughs> it's it turned out okay. So I feel, I feel bad because I'm like, I'm not even helping you or saying like, are you okay? I'm just like, is this even real? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Robbie's checking his watch. Is it still ticking? Sorry, seconds? dude. <laughs> um, no, it's all right. At least Carl had the the uh, sense to get it on video. His hand was very steady. He didn't try to help or anything. Just shot. <laughs> Let me get this on frame. Yeah. Hey, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, now he's he doing did his, his job. job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> perfect. So then, so yeah, then uh, we did the New Balance thing the next morning. Jared made embarrassed us all, yeah, uh, as usual. And we met some cool people, hung out. Yeah. But the coolest thing was like they had the choice of several singlets, mm -hmm. and I think the top pick was Believe the Believe one. It was nice, yeah. very cool. Yeah, navy blue, gold stripe, mm -hmm. Believe Boston. Yeah. Sweet. And then you guys did some stuff with uh, Adidas. We did. Yeah, we went to... Wait, did we? Oh, well, first we did a running warehouse video shoot. Oh, yeah. Oh, and that was a pain. That's because we used the thing and I accidentally used driving directions instead of walking directions. Oh. Yeah. So we ended up like doing an extra mile or so of walking. It was like definitely at least a half mile in the wrong direction and then turn and back. And back. I was like... I At one point, because I was already so tired from walking, I was like... I don't think I can make it to that bridge. Yeah. Like, but uh, guess what gave him energy? Seeing Emma Bates. No. Before no, that. No. Before that. Oh. It was before that. Something more exciting to him than. Eagle Eye. Oh, you found money. Well, Thomas, the Eagle Eye Thomas, that you spotted. I don't even know how you did it. I just thought it was flapping in the wind. <laughs> There's a dollar bill stuck in a rear windshield wiper of like an SUV. I'm like, I don't know. I still don't understand why or how it was there. It doesn't matter. It was there for you. Yeah. yeah. So, so I took that. So took that as a sign. It, we are walking much more than I wanted to. My feet are hurting at this point. But and it's 11 a.m. We crossed the bridge. <laughs> 12. And like sirens calling sailors to the shore. Mm -hmm. There's three phenomenal runners. Yeah. Tori, Emma, and um, Dom Scott. Dom, Dom Scott. Like they're just taking a break before they do their strides. So they're huddled together and we're like, perfect timing. Mm -hmm. So we all said hi, which was nice that they acted like they knew who we were. Yeah. Um, you know, they Emma knew who you yeah, were. Yeah, but it wasn't like, Dom does too, but it wasn't like they were, and Tori's followed us. They, But it wasn't like they were like too cool for school where they took off on their, like, hurry up guys, let's do yeah. our strides. Get away from these creepers. Yeah. And they were friendly enough to take a photo with us. Yeah. Which... Megan got jealous about. Yeah, I mean, those are cool people. I'd want to hang out. On her, basically, probably the last run. Maybe she did something the next day, but before the yeah before the marathon. And all three look just like beasts. They look like so strong. Yeah. Like and we did when in the photo, you know which people don't belong in that photo. Yeah. You're like, those are the, <laughs> those are the pro athletes. Yeah. And those are us. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. First check in. Look. 
We can plan, we can train, you can do everything right. And the day that you show up to the marathon, you can get hot temps, cold temps, anything. You can get like a weird cold from your kid. I don't know what's going on with you. But the thing is, if you're only judging your performance by the finish time or only judging your performance by one metric, you're going to miss out on all the beautiful things that happen during a race. And yeah, I would have loved to have hit my goals for this race for Boston, but it wasn't in the cards and I'm not bitter about it. I'm not upset about it. I just did the best I could that day and tried to experience the marathon and the people around me and have a good time. And I found myself really bonding with Lynn over the 26.2 miles. We got to spend some time with Robbie. So maybe just adjust your goals, adjust the way that you're approaching things and just enjoy the sport. So we met Running Warehouse. You want to tell them what we did? Yeah, so pee, we... Peeing by the side of the Charles. Oh, yeah, we both had to pee in the side of, of the... Yeah, in a, in a bush that wasn't really... Offered no protection. Because it was like an early spring bush, like the leaves yeah. weren't really there yet. Yeah. We didn't have Gatorade <laughs> bottles with us, so... Dude, we were dying. We just walked three miles. I'm kind of yeah. glad we missed this part. Yeah, I was pretty sure I was at the expo at this yeah. point. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was just Carl and us. But we shot some. We basically sat on a bench and uh, annoyed people as they ran by and heckled them. It was a little flawed. So they set up cameras, uh -huh. and people were supposed to run by us, and we were supposed to like call out their shoes and stuff. But people saw the camera, so what they did is they ran Avoided them out yeah. and around, like in the grass, and make a huge detour. And we're like, no, run past them, through yeah. them, and we basically we were trying to call out what shoes we would see and say like, oh, that's, yeah, that's a good shoe. But it's blah, the blah. worst thing because, you know, running warehouse can't say anything <laughs> snarky towards brands or we're, anything like that. Yeah. Which is all we do. Right. <laughs> so we're trying to like trash shoes and we're, we know none of this is going on the take. Yeah, we, <laughs> we gonna, looked over at Liz who's managing like what goes on, yeah. like what's going to make the cut. And I just saw her shaking her head like several times. Like, <laughs> no. Like, if you... The worst was every Brooks shoe that ran by. I had no idea which. They, they look exactly the same. I just say Ghost. Aside from Ghost Max, it's very Glycerin. hard to de to determine yeah. which Brooks is which. Um, do you think they do that on purpose? Do you think they're like, hey, this is our, our shoes don't need to look different? I don't know. Maybe. It, like it was impossible. Yeah. Except for. What was the most? I were the what shoe did we see the most? A lot of Bondi, Bondi, Hoka Bondi eights, and on. That was the most. The Bondi, I think, was the most popular. Yeah, on and Cloud Monster. On did several appearances. Brooks, there was a ton of Brooks oh, yeah. out there. I was surprised we didn't see more Asics. We only saw one pair of Super Blast, like one Nova Blast. Yeah, GTS two thousand. I mean GT two thousand. Oh yeah, because we called that guy out, and. uh the one brand that we didn't see any was uh, Puma. Not that, I mean, I don't know. We were like trying to think of what, what shoe didn't we see when we were out there. Anyways, Puma. Yeah. But that or was. Do you say Puma? Like, Puma. how do they want us to say it over in England? Oh, is that how you. Say they get mad at us for saying Puma. Puma. They're like, ooh, Puma. Yeah, I don't listen to, yeah, Puma. to any advice from those countries. <laughs> I'm just kidding to all you UK followers. That reminds me, I got to talk to you about something later. Okay. Germans and. and Spanish people. Well, you could have just said it later. Right, well, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Carl's just shaking. Okay. His head. So anyway, did that was that the end of Saturday? Oh, no. you guys went to the media. No, and we went to the expo. Yeah. Oh, we all went to the expo. Yeah. We went to the expo. So I made the right decision. I earlier went to the expo with Adidas, met up, and they took me like VIP straight up. Uh, no going through any lines or anything wow. um, right to get my bib. And then I decided, hey, you guys are going. There's no line outside anymore. I'll just hop in with you guys. And Little you took did you me know. through like the longest maze in the world. We went through eight rooms, which nothing were in. You went in the room around all these lines and then you left the room. Look, I get it if it's busy, you need that stuff. But during downtimes, they need to open up the barrier. Like, come on. We walked probably an extra well, mile. 
And they were really tricky about it too, because if you had known that, like, when you first walked in there, you just had to like pop over this way and could avoid a, these sections. They had a security guard I standing know. there. But it really did feel like we were like idiots. We were. We were. <laughs> yeah. So but then, mine is walking around. It was. It, it ooh, moved, we, and we, we all got, got our pro, bibs easily. Pro tip for people, though. Oh. Since Morton was the sponsor for nutrition on the course, yeah. The expo didn't have any like you know normally you can go to the expo and you're like oh I didn't bring everything I need yeah. so if unless you wanted Morton you were S O L yeah unlike a lot of marathons there were no outside vendors so this place where you get the shoes for like forty bucks or whatever yeah or the Morton's, shorts yeah Frank Cause, shorter because even New York City has yeah that stuff yeah but I don't know if it was Adidas or Morton or who but you there is none of that it's just kind of like the tours, travel, run, run vacation, runcation places, and stuff like that. I don't know compression. They were things. teaching CPR in one corner. Oh yeah, I thought that was weird. I know. I was trying it to turns get. Out it I was like trying to get in on, on that. Monday. Yeah, I was trying to see if <laughs> I. You thought get, it was the Wellesley the, girls. Damn, I was just gonna. <laughs> I was just gonna throw that. You beat me to it. Damn. <laughs> Is the Wellesley screen the Wellesley CPR tunnel? <laughs> um, Do you know what's funny about that? I saw there was a girl with the "Kiss Me" sign at Wellesley. There's like mm-hmm. a million of them. I oh, I only saw one. Oh, there's, there was a lot yeah. out. Yeah, no, no. yeah. COVID's over, baby. <laughs> they might have they might have put them down when you were yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quick, quick, turn them around. <laughs> That's, that that felt like a two Bruce Hay right there. It said it's like my own wife is yeah. me. On one side it said women's rights and the other side it said kiss me. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, they uh <laughs> that's amazing. But before we get to the yeah, this they're teaching CPR at the expo and I did think it was kind of interesting. That'd be probably good to know in an emergency. You know who else we ran into at the uh, expo? Mm-mm. I danced with Emma Bates. Because I could see her through. What? Oh, you were busy, Robbie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had extra time. Wait, what? I was trying to clear the system for the race in two days. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't recommend using the the bathrooms at the Expo Center. It, it, it's. I went th- there just to do the You would have thought it was a stock exchange yeah. in New York, the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. So many tickets. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, ticket tape parade. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was about as close to like a subway station bathroom as you can get. Yeah, dude. It was as busy and as, anyways. Yeah. Right. So we saw, I saw Emma Bates through a thing because she was doing a panel. And then, uh, Meg, who was moderating the, the panel? Oh, uh, Carrie Tolfson. Yeah, so she came over and talked for a little bit. Mm-hmm. She's was, very nice. Yeah, she was very cool. And uh, we rejoined Robbie. Yeah. At this point. I think the problem with, Marathon weekend is because you're trying to be consciously hydrating all the time. And like, like off your feet and you do the complete opposite. And I felt like I had to go to the bathroom all the time because I was drinking so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I yeah. am. Um, anyways, so then after that, we went back to the hotel for a total of 10 minutes, then went to a Adidas dinner where Kafuzi was doing a panel. Um and that was cool, except I was trying not to fall asleep hardcore the whole time. It was like a, like I texted you in the thing. I was like, this is like a sound machine for runners. Yeah. Like, and, and not in a, it wasn't like it was born. It was just like, it was the quiet setting and he's interviewing people. Yeah. Like Kafuzi has a calming voice to yeah. begin with. Oh, for sure. And so I was just like, <laughs> tooth, where are the toothpicks? Prop my eyelids open. <laughs> um, well, I think I'll, also, I think we expect to get there. There would be a happy hour and then... Oh, right. A panel and then some food and stuff. It was like straight and off our feet, sit down and relax. And in a warm and, room yeah. with, a, with a thing. And uh, so, yeah, after that, there was a cocktail. Oh, wait. I, I, Can I tell yeah. the part? When we got in there, there's a bunch of round tables because it's in a hotel ballroom or meeting sure. room. And there was a one guy sitting at this table. Lounged out. Yeah. It was the only table open. The, yeah. Really the only table open. And I was like, is it cool? Like, cause we, we s- had, we were sitting with Ashley Mateo, you. Yeah. Well, hold on. So I was just like, can I, is it cool? We sit here. And he was like, kind of like looked at me like he didn't, I, he, he said yes, but 
it was there's like a little hesitation maybe and so we yeah so we sat down ashley mateo me we you. asked him to move so that ashley T- mateo could, did we yeah <laughs> oh, so yeah. yeah so he, it, so because there was like five of us and it was a round table we were like we want to sit together uh-huh and he was like sitting like at the worst possible spot, like splitting up like three chairs, this yeah, way, three chairs that way, yeah. So we're like, I'm like, Ashley, just grab it. He's like, oh, no, I, I can get up. So he he got up and moved, and we moved his chair. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't see that part. So we're yeah struggling to you know keep our composure during the whole thing, and then afterwards, the PR person from Adidas came up and she was like. Oh yeah, by the way, that was uh, a CEO. Adidas CEO sitting at your table. Oh my gosh. I was like, okay. Yeah. Would have been nice to know. The only thing cooler would have been if Yeezy was there with him. Yeah. I don't think they're on good terms lately. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> um and then What if you stayed awake for that? <laughs> yeah, so who knows? Maybe. So yeah, Robbie's sleeping at his chair in front of the CEO. Yeah. I've never seen anyone look so tired. <laughs> Sometimes I, I wonder when I'm like, if I'm fooling people, like, I, and I wish someone videotaped me during these moments because I can't tell if I'm awake or sleeping. Do you know? Do you know when you're doing that? When you're like eyes, you're like, are my eyes open or are they not open? Because you can't tell. <laughs> when does this happen? Oh, you might be video. <laughs> I'm looking at Carl over here, dude. All my work <laughs> meetings at, when I used to work in the uh, Coast Guard, yeah, Coast Guard. Pff, I was like, am I awake or not? Because your eyes are so heavy. You're like, I think I'm like seeing, like, I think no, I'm still I like, seeing, but I, like I can't doing tell. the head nod where you wake up and you're. That's me on every airplane ride. Oh, yeah. yeah. And for some reason, Thomas loves taking photos of us I know. while we're sleeping. I, well, a little I creepy. No, I <laughs> love it. Creepy. My favorite is I look over, Robbie's mouth is open, head back, Megan's face down. Probably like drooling or something. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, a perfect opportunity to show how tiring these trips can be. <laughs> um. So, anyways, we made it through. We made it through, and then at dinner, Thomas did an Irish exit. Boom! I I saw that door, and I, well, I actually I stepped out. And I said, "Meg, I'm I'm beat." I respect the Irish exit. He, he said, "Can I do an Irish goodbye?" And I said, "To our team." And I was like, <laughs> yeah, was "Yeah, like yeah." I was like, "At least say goodbye to our team." So I went back in and said goodbye to you guys. Oh, you did? Yeah, no, oh, I did. Not you to did me. To me but oh. You were like Jarrett. I'm I doing you an were, Irish goodbye, and you, you just left. You so. might have been talking to someone. That's cool. I, don't, I, I really don't. So care. I boogied out, um, but. I went back and I got Meg food on the on my way home, which I don't, what were you going to do for food if I didn't do that? Just eat snacks in the hotel. Hmm. But we both, how many steps did you have that day? We're supposed to be like off our feet. 27,000, yeah. yeah. something like that. Casual. I think yeah. I had like 24, 20, 25,000. And I'm like, that wasn't successful. And I said to Megan mm-hmm. when I got home that night, I said, I don't know how I'm going to be able to run a marathon in a couple of days. She's like, you'll sleep tonight. Yeah. I said, I hope so, because I did not sleep well Friday night. Okay. Yeah, so the next morning was the big old shakeout run with ASICs. Mm-hmm. Third year in a row, and definitely the biggest one that we've had. Oh, yeah. They've grown each year. I think the first one was probably around 300 people. Last year was probably like five, 600 people. Yeah. And this year... It was like 1,000 people. It was 1,000 people. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. We had a photographer ask someone if he could use their apartment randomly so he could climb out of a window yeah. to get a photo. That was on the other side of the street. Yeah. So, yeah. and the street was filled, like we had it, it completely. It was nice because I think some other people uh, benefited from our our crowds as well. Mm-hmm. But because uh, Boyle, if you don't know, Newberry has all the like pretty much all the brands do like pop-ups and stuff on Newberry Street. So you're going to get a little crossover pollination. It was like everyone's doing a shakeout run. Yeah. That between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., there's like 15 different shakeout runs happening. Like you could do a marathon the day before just by doing all the different shakeouts. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm sure someone's doing. I mean, Co is usually doing like everything. I know, and I look at it, it's like he gets around, and you're like, oh, well, he's not racing on money, but still. He's going to London and racing. I know, but even so, like, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of time on your feet, too. Yeah, but that was super, super fun. Um, We gave out our corduroy hats, which, guys, we only had 300, and we gave them out to the first people 
generally that showed up and we wish that we had more and we could have given them to you. There was a dude who showed up at 7 a.m. or something to get yeah. one of the hats. And we're going to try and make some more. Um, There's a couple hangups. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to. But okay, it, we may have to do it without uh, branding from our partner on it because otherwise we're creating and selling. Yeah, no, I didn't think yeah. there would be a brand on it. Okay. I was just saying you'll have an opportunity to get a similar hat for purchase in the future. Um, but yeah, so we apologize if you came and you didn't get one because we wish that we could have given one to everyone. Uh, we also had really good bagels there from Goldilocks. Delicious. Shout out to them. They no, were great. I didn't get one. First time, oh. Robbie, this was the best bagel I've ever had at an event. Normally, <laughs> even if you go to like a, a hotel, the bagels are a little hard because, yeah. you know, the, these were nice, oh, fresh bagels. Yeah. I ate like four of them. And and that's on you because they had a lot of bagels. But we, we ate them all. They were gone by the end. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, that was all very fun. Yeah, shout out to both New Balance and A6 teams, man. It, they just yeah. the amount of work that they put in to support some of the things that we we do with them is is phenomenal. And people were trying on you know shoes and uh, Friday and Saturday they were doing the uh, Rebel before and the SC Elite before for people to try. And then during the A6 one, uh, what shoe were they doing? Was that because I saw a lot of people Paris. wearing yeah, yeah. Paris. Yeah. Which is always fun during a shakeout run to let people demo race day shoes because then the pace of the shakeout run turns into like a mini race. And by the way, speaking of pace, it's pretty rad. Clayton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's pretty rad that Clayton Young was just standing there on the course giving high fives. Well, no. So he, he, he was driving by. Yeah. Oh, really? And got out of his car. <laughs> And no stopped to give everyone high fives. And That's dude, it sick. was like Secret Service. It was yeah. like a black sedan. And he then was like he dressed had dudes, nicely going somewhere. He had dudes in suits that were like surrounding him. Are you sure he wasn't just coming from like a Mormon service or something? I I didn't actually see him. I just like heard a that Sunday these morning. things happened. It sounded maybe like maybe coming, he was going to. Maybe he's coming from church service. Or, yeah. Maybe. But, I wasn't trying to make I was just trying to be for real. Maybe that is what. No, I, I believe that you were trying to be yeah. for real. You're possibly correct. Or, was, or he did have Secret Service around him. I don't know. Could be I don't think it was that. Okay. You don't know. He's a national treasure. Clayton, let us know. Yeah, that's true. He's going to the Olympics. Um. Yeah. And then we went off and got some, I don't know what, I guess that's brunch at that Pressed. point. Yeah. Pressed Cafe, which we always go to. Which it's almost hard to order there because there's so many things on that menu. Yeah. But it's good. While well, you guys went and had brunch with Tracksmith. Yeah. Robbie, uh, Carl, and I went over to Rochambeau, which is right next to... It's French yeah. for rock, paper, scissors. The, you know what? That's what we called it when I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, Rochambeau, because we'd even do Rochambeau. Right. And when I, came, when I came to the East Coast, nobody called it that. Really? Yeah. I don't know that I call it, but I, I knew that was another name for, for rock, paper, scissors. Oh, growing up in California, that's what we called it, Rochambeau. Yeah. I knew that I knew that was, but it was this. That's how you had to get into the restaurant was to beat someone at rock, paper, scissors. That'd be funny. Like if they gave you one chance, like you're here for the tracksmith, Rochambeau. And if you don't get it, they're like, oh man, toodaloo, mother. Sorry, Jerry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that it was literally right next to the uh, expo, which was convenient. Um, And so we were, what, two blocks away from the ASICs uh, shakeout. So walked over there. Of course, we were the first people there. Um, and I know. What do you mean, ASIC shakeout? They went from the ASIC shakeout to the tracks. Oh, so you're saying, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I thought you went back to like another ASIC shakeout. No, no. um, but it was this tracksmith uh, media brunch, and uh, I mean, I got the banana brioche French toast. What did you learn? What did I learn? Yeah, you said it was a media. It was just the media was invited. Oh, it wasn't like a. It was a closed. Show you something. Yeah, yeah. No, they showed just, us a good time. It was just hang out. It was like Runner's World. Um, some uh, who's the Matt the the YouTuber that does shoe reviews. Matt the tall guy. Matty. I think v. it's just hey, it's Matt or something. Uh, yeah. Like that. Um, and then the guy yeah, from a London. bunch yeah. outside run whatever. Um. So yeah, it was. Dude, we had 
I was so I was that another place where I was almost falling asleep because we had there was the, they had this brioche French toast where the slice of bread is like four inches thick and it was uh, after you eat that with syrup, dude, you're out. I mean, yeah, it was on the nap time. Did you go take a nap? I tried when I got back to the hotel, but yeah. you know when sometimes you're just so tired you can't take a nap. Yeah, that's the worst. Like that. Dude, I loved it when we got back to the hotel because I was like chill, tired time. Yeah. And then Jared and I had a nice uh, little afternoon together. Yeah. What did you guys do? Did you guys do? cuddle? Yeah, a little bit. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, got some food? No? Now we did get, we get went to the Dirty, what is it? Dirty Water? Dirty Water. Dirty Water Dough Company. We got the chicken Parmesan pizza. And we split it. It's so good. No. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. What do you mean No. Remember I got dirty water with you guys the day before? The day before that? Yeah. 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 Okay. N- not, I didn't think it was so good. We got pizza from another place. Yeah. But it wasn't chicken parmesan pizza. No. no it's it was regular. Not. That's the Guy Fieri stamp of approval right there. All right. We got, we got regular cheese pizza from, I forget the name of the place. Mm-hmm. I thought it was heads and tails over. Okay. All right. Well. But you're I'm allowed, you you're allowed to have yours. a pizza. I know, right? This is the second year in a go- uh, row we did this. So we did that. Oh, you did that last year? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, so, we, uh, and what else did we do, Jarrett? We also had a little uh, binge of I Think You Should Leave. We watched Again? the entire third season. It's a tradition at this point. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I know. Lots of laughs. A couple <laughs> hours of just binging. Whose hotel room did you go to? Mine. He's got two beds. Oh. There was two beds in there. Yeah. So, of course, we put the pizza in one bed, and Robbie and I were both in the other. So Yeah, that's yeah. what I figured. Yeah. One bed for eating. One, one bed, bed can be for <laughs> activities, and the other one can, you know, the sheets are still clean. Yeah. Keep your... <laughs> Keep your hobbies and life's different beds. <laughs> um, anyways, so that was a that was a fun fun way to end the the lead up to the Boston Marathon. We ended up um, doing a quick trip to that little supermarket, the Star. Star. And we who oh. did we see there? We saw feathers. Well, I was meeting Jen uh, from New Balance because she was kind enough to offer that she would be out at mile seventeen, and she'd hand me some scratch. How'd that work out? I missed her. Um, but that's okay. And so she met us at the grocery store and then I met Megan because she got me some Morton's from the, um, expo because the ones I brought were like six months expired. And I was like, do I want to gamble on race day? I don't know. So, oh, you know, it's, you know, it's crazy. Hmm. I'm sorry. I was listening, but then I stopped listening hmm. and I looked at Sounds the painting great. that I did for you uh, a few years back and I forgot that that's the elevation profile of Boston. It is. And I was looking at it, I was like, oh, that looks just like my Strava. <laughs> that looks like my Strava paces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, so we met them at the restaurant, which was fun. At the grocery. Yeah, at the grocery. <laughs> hmm And so we had all our snacks and all our stuff. And then what did we do for dinner? Like you just said, pizza. The, oh, that's right. We had the better <laughs> okay. pizza. Yeah, okay. We'll have to do a taste test. And then test you actually. guys got to sleep in, kind of. I had to get on a bus by six forty-five. But I, I mean, I was up with you. Yeah. I woke up at four thirty. <laughs> went to bed at you know eleven or eleven thirty. Wow. That wasn't my fault because I left the room around like eight. Or I so. I go to bed when I I was like I'm gonna stick to my schedule of life. Going to bed at eleven thirty. That's what I do every night. You go to bed at eleven thirty. Eleven thirty or twelve every night. <gasps> Gosh. Wow. And then I get up at 6.30 or 7. So I was like, that would be perfect for me. Because I don't get, if I get, I don't never can sleep more than seven hours. So I gave myself seven and a half, woke up at 4.30. Just, and I wasn't even like on edge. I wasn't thinking about the race at all. Yeah. And I kept, I kept almost like going back to sleep, you know, when you have like weird thoughts. Yeah. And then it would hit that, the bridge between sleep and not sleep. And I'd come back for like an hour and a half. I kept doing that. Where, was it loud outside? No, everything was perfect. That was the most oh. frustrating thing. There was no, it was a perfect situation. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah, my I air cannot. conditioner worked in my room for you know that never happens. <laughs> everything was lovely. Look, this is when I do it. My sleep the the night before the marathon. Dude, what? Yeah, he's like he like woke up. He's like I feel great. I slept so long, and I was like, what? Mine would have been the mine was probably like the inverse of that. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. So I need to do whatever Meg Featherson does. With uh, I don't know what sleep age she takes. You know some. Yeah, I need I need to actually do that. Yeah, like the drugs. Yeah, just knock me out. Yeah.
All right, second check-in. You know, this happens to the pros too. Imagine if every time that they lined up, they're like, if I don't podium, my career's over. And they're pros, so there's a lot of pressure to do really well. So there's all different kinds of metrics they have. There's all kinds of things that they have to work on. And I can't imagine that their only focus is whether or not they finish first, second, or third. You know, they've got to find ways to stay motivated because there's always competition out there. There's always a way that you're going to have to judge yourself at the end of the day. So maybe take a thought on how you can figure out what's ways that you can win even if you don't win in the typical ways you think you would. All right, let's take a little hydration break, Meg. Today's sponsor is, again, Element. I'm drinking it right now. (laughs) We love drinking it all the time. Thomas is drinking it right now. And some of the benefits of the electrolyte beverage are that it maintains steady energy, it improves your cognitive function, you suffer from fewer headaches, which Robbie can attest to. 100%. It's a game changer in that department after a long run. You experience fewer muscle cramps, which I can attest to for sure. And it's just, it helps your performance in general. Yeah. And I've got a couple special recipes for you. Definitely try mixing it with club soda or sparkling. What do you call it? Seltzer water? Sparkling water. Yeah. 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 Try it with that over ice. Pretty good. It's a nice treat. If you want a little hydration treat and a little kick, you can even mix this with a little bit of vodka or tequila. (laughs) Make your own ranch water. It's pretty good, but I use it for pretty much everything. All right. And if you want to get some element yourself, you can actually get a free sample pack with any order if you use our link, which is drinklmnt.com slash the drop. Now back to the show. But anyways, so yeah, I was up early. Bummer. Mm. Um, yeah, then I went off to meet Ben Johnson and my friend Chris uh, at what the happened? Buses. What happened first? And as I'm walking down there, I'm like, "Why am I squinting? Oh, it's so sunny. Oh, I forgot my sunglasses." Uh-uh. uh-uh. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> so I called Thomas because I was only a few blocks away okay. from the the Westin at that point. I called him and I was like, "Can you do me a favor? Can you just meet me? Like, I'm gonna turn around and start walking back to the hotel. Can you meet me down at the bottom?" Mm. And so he did. And he handed him off to me, and then I turn around to start walking, and who do I run directly into? But Allie Feller. So it was kind of like the best case scenario because I wouldn't have seen her above otherwise. Um, So I got a big hug with her and then, and I made it and met up with Ben and Chris and we got on the buses, no issue there. It's funny though, because every year I hear stories about buses getting lost and I almost brought it up when we were on our bus, but I was like, I'm not jinxing it because then our bus will get lost. Okay. A friend, Nick walked up at the starting corral. His bus was the first one to leave. Oh wow. And got lost. No. And he said that they like she all of a sudden realized it was a, a bus driver and she was like, I think I might have make a, made a wrong turn because we're not there. I don't understand how it happened. I don't either. But the best part was we saw ones that were broken down. Yeah. <laughs> so there was one that was broken down in the line. So luckily people just didn't get on it. But then we saw one on the side of the road. And I'm like, oof, that would suck. Your nerves are up. Yeah. You're on your way and your bus breaks down. You have to run to the start. <laughs> How did it feel being back on a school bus? I mean, it's always a good time. Mm, I Although, thought I prefer the VIP bus. Yeah, but I like, you know, just the general rowdiness of it, maybe. And you always, the only thing with being on the school bus is in a race, you want to be the nerd. So you sit in the front instead of the back. Mm-hmm. But in the back is generally, you know, where the cool kids sit. It's where the action happens. Yeah. We're getting spitballs at our head, spit at our head from all the low lights in the back. Um, but I like it. I like it. It's always funny how long those bus rides feel in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, I'm running this back. Yeah, that's, I just can't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so ridiculous. But it, what, while the weather was not ideal for racing, it was lovely for in the bus morning. Riding. <laughs> in, like hanging out in Athletes Village because yeah. you have to be there for like an hour. Dude, we were laying on the ground and I was like literally hot. Yeah. Like I was just laying there and I was like, I could sunbathe all day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were we were just putting on sunscreen for pretty much an hour. I have to give credit to Robbie. Yeah. I never would have grabbed this sunscreen. Uh, he probably But they saved, had like pumps in, at the corral. Even yeah. better, they have all the selections of SPFs that you would want because all the people, when you start in the last corral, 
everybody, all 29,000 other people leave their sunscreen on the grass. Uh, and you just look around and say, which kind of sunscreen would I like today? We were what? using spray, stick. You got like the good all. sport kind. Yeah. You maybe don't sweat it off until they mile did, three. I think we did use sports sunscreen. I used, so you know me, I'm a little bit. You know, like, I was surprised when you did this. I took the stick because I wanted the stick for my face. What? And I shaved off the oh. top oh. with the lid. Oh, I didn't know you did that. Yeah, Never shaved mind. off the top with the lid and then used my finger. In. Yeah, well, that, that don't impress yeah. me much. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, that impressed you. <laughs> I thought you just straight up did it uh, all natural. Yeah, the and yeah, anti chafe cream. I forgot all Vaseline, that. Vaseline. Well, that. I figured the sunscreen was a moot point because I was going to start sweating profusely and it was just going to be uh, all off of me anyway. Okay. But I do regret not using chafing. Yeah. Uh, anti chafe. Oh, dude, I, I lathered myself this year mm. and I use those. I, I'm going to have to like show these on. Um, maybe I'll have Carl take a picture of them, but the, the blister um, band aids. You want you him to with? take a picture of you wearing them? No. <laughs> okay. I want him to take a picture of the brand so that people <laughs> got that side hustle. Going people on. know it because uh, it those they they're the my life. they're the um like the liquid band aids. Yeah, kind I got of. You. Yeah, yeah, they're like jelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I doubled them up, and I'm glad I did. But yeah, no blisters. That's good. So that was my first athletes village. Oh yeah, experience. And I have to say, I don't know if it's because we were with uh you know like the last crew to go but it was really chill like no one was freaking out people were just laying like you know all spread out on the grass and like well the year before it was raining and so we were you know that big tent that was there yeah imagine everybody that was in that field instead of like being in the field they were all in that tent yeah it was wild it was packed it smelled weird <laughs> there's water everywhere yeah there's yeah. water on the ground like well, it was not a good scene. The best part about Athletes Village. The urinals. Is, yeah, the urinals. The fact that they have these four, pretty much, it's, it's Urinal like, fountain. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like four urinals, one on each side. Just say an X, and in the center of each X was a there you place go. to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, that's efficient. Yeah. The dude turnover was amazing. Yeah. It was like... It was like a factory. One dude in, one dude out. One dude in, one dude out. And it was just a... Rip. Are you talking about an athlete's village or the second stop before the start line? Both. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean... Do you know what we're talking about, Meg? Like, it's it's only for the dudes. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah. I didn't use them. I figured you would have to, like, jumped. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, I was, like, trying to figure out a way where they could do that for women, but I don't know. Mm, Not no. really. No. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. You guys just go over there and right. do that. But the problem is, if you're if you're a dude in line for the porta potties, everyone you know. everyone knows, <laughs> knows why. Yeah, we, we were joking about that yeah. at the start line too. Uh, did you guys get the planes fly over, or was that no, early? No, that was, that was early. We were in the bus when okay. that happened. Oh, it's such a cool sound. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Wait, so where were they flying over? Like they flew right over the start. Yeah, we were when we were in the Athletes Village. But when they flew over us, that was way before the start. Right, but that's they probably that was what the wheelchair start or something. That like was that. The, the first start was at nine thirty. Oh yeah, that might yeah. be it. And those planes get from that twenty six miles is probably takes them two seconds. Right. Like how far? How fast do you think they're flying? Uh, probably five. It has to be at least five hundred miles an hour, right? Yeah. So like That's 26 right. miles yeah. is like a blip. Yeah. Yeah. So standing in the corrals, it was the first time I've run Boston or at least the first time in the past three years where I was like not shivering cold, mm -hmm. which is great until it's not. Um, but yeah, it was uh, like logistics were easy and good and everything was great. It just got really warm really, really fast. fast. So you were out. 10 a.m. She, we were arriving in the village when Megan was okay. starting. I got, I got back and turned on my phone. I have like texts from him at like 10, 15, being like, "We're here," and I'm like, "I, I was, I was running at that point." <laughs> right. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you could have been in the porta potty. And so, all right, so Meg, your race, you start out. Are you feeling good? Um, I felt fine. I didn't feel great. I didn't feel bad. I was just, I, I was warm like almost immediately. Uh -huh. So I went out at like what was originally the goal was to go out at like 6.30s, drop it to 6.20s and then hold that. 
I went out at like 620s, but it's that downhill. Yeah. So it was like comfortable. And then I thought I was con- running consistent 620s, mm-hmm. but they just each mile got slower, mm-hmm. but it felt the same. Mm. So I just was like, well, this is just what the day is going to be. So I wasn't even looking at my watch and I was just trying to break it up like mentally, like until we got halfway until like I saw Jen at 17, who which I barely saw. And like, here come the hills and that kind of stuff. But it wasn't, it wasn't as fun as for me as the previous years, because one, I didn't feel as great. Two, it was hot. And then three, I was running by myself this time. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. That's gotta be, that's gotta be a little tough. I mean, it was nice because when we started, it was me, Thomas, Jarrett, Lynn, uh, Ronell, and who? Drew. Like some, uh, Drew Wickham and like Hannah from Gooder was right there. Like there was just a bunch oh, wow. of people we yeah. knew like all right beside us. We were in the last wave, the last corral. So there were, I mean, we were within the last 100 Wait, people. Wait, the last wave of Dude, the last corral? I looked yeah. behind me and I was like, yeah. oh, we actually are no the last one. people in the race. That's kind of cool though. Yeah, there was like 50, <clears throat> what, 50 people behind us? So you just passed people <laughs> the whole time though. Yeah. Yeah. That's the fun. entire yeah. marathon. Yeah. I was much. passing people. Okay, see, that's fun. And the yeah. other part that was good about that was because I was feeling like crap towards you and we can get to that in a minute but like we're passing the the other the blue bibs the red bibs and you're like Ooh. you passed red bibs oh yeah, yeah that's I'm a like, bad you day. guys yeah. must have been at, like you're having a day dude yeah. what was crazy was like the first mile mile two when you hear people like breathing, breathing heavy going up the small uphill and i was like it's like, gonna be a long day for you I'm like you shouldn't be like i'm actually <laughs> scared for you Cause this is like, they're struggling in mile two. Yeah. That's right. Like, this is going to be horrible, like yeah. really bad. So I felt bad for them. What did you think of the start? Cause I remember I said like it, it's downhill, but like, they're still like the rollers. They're, yeah. Did they're you feel like they were hills or were you like, no, this is fine. I mean, I, I definitely recall that there were some good downhill at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then some good downhill. Yeah. Some good <laughs> downhill. Um, and then, yeah, there, it was just rolling hills for for it, and it definitely was noticeable because I was like, "We're not at mile 17. so uh, yeah. we're going up right now." Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. everyone only talks about in new the downhill. Yeah, yeah. But there's sig- even the the downhills. Like you get some. Yeah. Like that right there. Yeah, some like you yeah. get some some decent hills in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I sure. think that is a surprising to people. Like, and luckily we had already run the course before, so I knew that it, it's rolling. Mm-hmm. But I think people think it's going to be like this downhill ride right. to Newton. It's not. It's a. Yeah. It's an undulating course. Yeah. Yep. And then we, so I, we kind of ran together, the first five or six miles because it's like packed. Wait, right? were you? I I thought you were pretty much gone. Like I felt like maybe mile five but pretty okay. much like we were around i saw you or were around each other right. for the first five and then you and drew picked it up yeah because drew was trying to go like 330 and i thought mm, i'll just see for a couple miles how i'm feeling ran you know and, see, it was, and our, our goal at that point was to run 330 yeah but i knew we the first three miles were 845s and then we had plenty of time so <laughs> it was I mean, not really yeah I talked to my coach it, when we talked to Caster. He's like, "Don't even worry if you're going 9:40 for the first three miles. You'd have to make up six minutes on the yeah. If you drop it down to 7:40 uh, for the last uh, you know few miles. Yeah, I knew there's no way I was running 7:40s <laughs> for like the whole rest I mean, that of the was race. The, like our no our so the training I did the cherry blossom yeah was pretty much eight flats and then we dropped it down to like sub eights for the last five miles and some of those were like 730 740 so i was like so if the weather had been good i feel like we could have gone out conservative for the first three four miles yeah and started dropping the pace consistently as we went over um the course and yeah. it felt like i was doing but that that's what i meant the weather wasn't good so i was yeah. like anyway so i was i was going um with drew for like you know, a couple withdrew. mile come withdrew a couple mile. Yeah, withdrew from the race. Withdrew <laughs> Whitcomb for a couple of miles under eight, 
And then I was like, he started getting further ahead of me. I'm like, yeah, this, this isn't happening. Like, it's just not yeah. happening. And so, and then I just, after that was purely by feel. And I said to Lynn, I was like I, 8, 820. When you guys, 30. when you guys took off, I said to Lynn, I said, do not, do, do not no. follow them. I said, I said, I don't know where Drew's fitness is, but I go, this is real early for them to be taken off at this pace. I said, if we're going to stick to the plan, let's like stick to our plan. So, well, I, th- I no, so th- that's the thing. I was surprised that because we weren't running that it was eight minutes. It was only eight minutes per mile. So I thought you guys would be now for the first five miles. I was like, I'm not going faster than like eight 30. Okay. All right. Oh, anyways. Um, and then, so did you run most of it by yourself? In the well then, so I, I was stopping at all the water stations to drink water and pour water on my head. So that's yes. adding 15 seconds per mile yeah. every time, pretty much. Oh, you were stopping in the beginning? Like st- stopping, drinking some water, pouring on my head, then okay. go. So it's like, at the, and at that point, I'm like, whatever, yeah. I'm just going to yeah, run. Yeah. And then I had to take a piss around mile 10. Did you stop? Yeah. Oh, wow. And then... Uh, mile, I saw like Aaron Azar around mile 12 or something. But wait, when did you come back with us? So that was mile 15, mile 14 or 15. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was, I had just taken a gel and I was taking gels every 30 minutes, uh-huh. which is the first time I've ever done that. And that actually worked really well. Yeah, that's perfect. And so, and I felt fine with stomach wise and everything. So I was, yeah, taking gels every 30 minutes. And I I just have to find it. I really hate throwing gel packets on the ground. Like it dries. I know everyone does it. I know I'm not judging anyone who does it, but I hate doing it. And usually I have pockets in my shorts, yeah. but those racing shorts didn't have any pockets. And so I was like, there has to be a trash can. Like we were in one of the towns or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, I was looking for money on the ground because <laughs> there, was there wasn't many people around me. I was like, just like looking for stuff. So I'm looking at my feet and I'm really like looking at my feet most of the race because I know these roads yeah. are bad. Yeah. My ankles are bad. And I am finally, then I'm like looking up, looking for a trash can. I swear to you, th- think about all the roads and shakeout runs we ran the prior days that it had to be the flattest piece of road you've ever seen your whole life. And next thing I know, I was like on the ground. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Just like roll my ankle on the ground and luckily didn't like get uh, like cut up or anything. And did, so then like, did you fall in front of anyone? No. So that was like the one spot of the race where there's like no one around. Like oh. it was a gap between behind and in front of me. And so I got up, went over to the side and I had already been thinking about that point about trying to just drop back and run with Jarrett or you guys, because I'm like, what, what am I doing? I'm running by myself. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to run a 340 or something, 345. So like, who cares if you're lucky? Yeah. And I wasn't feeling bad. I felt like I could hold that yeah. pace forever. And so I pulled off and asked the lady who was standing there if she had tracking on her phone, which she did. So she looked up Jarrett. She's like, he's like four minutes behind you. That's nice. And so I was like, all right, I'll wait for him and took a gel, like finished uh, the gel that I had or I can't remember. Anyway, or threw it out. And then was just like hung out there and a police officer came over from across the street and was like trying to get me to go to the medical. He's like, are you all right? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Was like, trust me, this happens all the time. <laughs> he's like, no, right. he's like, we can take you to the medical tent. I'm like, no, like. Did you tell him real. you were waiting for a friend? Yeah. Okay. And then, so then instead of Jarrett, Thomas and Lynn came through. Oh. I was like, well, I'll just run with them. Yeah. This is only a couple minutes after. So then I ran with you for. Like till 21. Yeah. Because you were asking me, am I going to, you were asking me well, if no, I was still going to wait for Jared. Yeah, you told me, you're like, uh, I'll go to the top of this hill. And that was like the first hill. And you're like, I'll go to the top of this hill and then uh, I'll wait for Jared. And I was like, okay. And so we crossed the first hill and you're still running with us. I was like, you gonna, are you planning on waiting for, are you going to stop and wait for Jared? And you're like, I'm a, I'll am i do it at the end of the, the hills. The Newton Hills, yeah. Which is what I did, so. You waited at the top of Heartbreak? Yeah, uh, Did you see or there, him struggle up. There's that? like a there's like a little one after that, yeah, I think, yeah. and that's the one the one after that. Okay, but heartbreak I felt good on. I was like, you know what? If I can redeem myself for one thing, I'm gonna run hard up heartbreak. Oh wow! And so I did that, and I was like, okay, like that felt fine. And then, but I was like, I'll just. I was definitely on the fence because I was like, I could be, 
I was actually feeling pretty good. I was like, I could be done with this race in like 40 minutes and that would be nice to just be like out of like out of the sun. Yeah. But I was like, I, like I really I genuinely wanted to be there when Jarrett like ran his yeah. first, Boston. like finished the first Boston. Cause I was, didn't get to run with you guys last year. Didn't get to run. Like I just always by myself. Yeah. So I was like, what the hell? Like yeah. I'll just hang out. And then and I'll let you tell us part, but I was waiting. So I pulled off again and asked someone if they had a tracker on their phone. Okay. And this guy did. And he's like, yeah, he's, he's like a mile behind you. And I was like, all right, that's eight or nine minutes or yeah. whatever. Well, you know, I guess those trackers aren't like totally accurate. Right. Like it's like estimated. Yeah. And so it ended up being like 20 minutes. Oh, were you <laughs> freaking out? Yeah. Cause I thought maybe I missed him. Like yeah. he, I got time my shoes or something and right. he passed me. And I'm like, and everything is starting, like my ankle is starting to get like stiff and like Ugh. my legs are kind of like, I'm like, shit, like this might've been a bad idea. And then, um, but then here comes Jared. So did you see him? Day. I did see him. And I, I mean, at that point I was getting pretty, pretty tired, but I, <laughs> I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty tired. In that course, <laughs> no, that was Bubba. That was um, Bubba. So, I mean, it was kind of nice to see it was surpri- it was surprising to see him because obviously I would not expect yeah. that, um, but everything was still attached to his body. So, <laughs> barely, like, barely, yeah. Were you like, so, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, it was more. Yeah, it was like you look you look decent. So what's going on here? <laughs> um, but I mean, starting off the race, we it was six of us in the corral, but we pretty much broke up into twos. Uh, who are you run? Oh, you're I running ran with, with Ronell. Uh, Ronell, who's Ron, the Ronell. yeah, the voice of like the Atlanta track, track club. stuff, and he is like the most inspirational. Like he really I mean, is talking to all these people, constantly talking. Like you know, he looks like a on. male model. It looks like he should be on the bachelor. I know it was pretty unfortunate <laughs> yeah. that I had to run with him because he was so good looking. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it, it looked like, like it looked like twins. It was Danny DeVito <laughs> and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Um, but I found it interesting. He said that he was like real early on. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be talking a ton. Sorry about that. He's like, I use this as like practice. Um, if I can talk while running like this, then it's great for like announcing when I'm tired. And I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, everyone was like turning to him. They were like, dude, I love your energy and stuff like that. And it wasn't obnoxious because yeah. i know we've right. all ran right. with those people yeah. who are inspirational and top. you're like dude get Shut away up. from me leave me alone <laughs> i'm like i just want to be in my own misery right now but no it, it was great um and we hung together i mean for the first we were until 21 when we saw you i mean we were we were enjoying taking our times like he was stopping at the water mm-hmm. stations and filling up uh his bottle um, when did you guys decide you were going to run together? Athletes Village. Oh. He was like, yeah, I'm not trying to go fast. I I don't know if I'll do like four hours. And this was when it wasn't like super hot. Yeah. So all that. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? Like you, I'm pretty sure you look like you could run like a, a 255 mm-hmm. uh, and then also bench press 600 pounds at the same time. <laughs> Um, and it's like, I'm pacing you. No, 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 something's not right here. But, uh, I mean, we had so much fun and then caught up with Robbie and Robbie was with us for, we were all together until probably around 23. But Mm -hmm. in between that was Wellesley, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. no, you, Wellesley was before that. Okay. Wellesley's like, okay. So I ran with Ronnell for Wellesley and then caught up with you Mm -hmm. And then it was like Boston College kids. Yeah. And I might get some hate for this, and I'm sorry, but I thought the Boston College kids were way better, way louder, and it was just like nuts. That's like 23? Yeah. The downhill? Yeah. 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 I kind of agree. Yeah. Yeah. Then Wellesley. I mean, Wellesley was maybe louder, but there was more party at Boston. Yeah. Yeah. And like we were like getting like I mean we were getting real into it, and then regretting it like shortly <laughs> Cause, after because you're time. like sprinting through the well, crowd because it's like, that Let's strong go. downhill yeah. too. So yeah. it's that last like yeah yeah. So I mean that it was like so much fun, but also so tiring. And each time it was a really bad decision. <laughs> but 
I, I couldn't like stop. Yeah. Um, no, you got to do that. Yeah. And by that point, Ron L kind of like went ahead for something. And I was, I mean, I was real tired at this point. Um, my lungs were not a hundred percent at all. They, they were probably around 80%. And it got to the point where I was like, I can't catch my breath. Yeah. It's hurting. Well, like, Cause you were sick a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So you had a respiratory illness. Yeah. Um, and that, I was shocked that I wasn't coughing anymore, but I mean, 26 was probably not the best idea. However, like I'm going to pass up an opportunity at Boston Marathon. Right. Uh, and we were like, I was, even before that, uh, when I was running Lynn and stuff, I was just starting to treat it like an ultra. So I'm like, give me the oranges, give me the popsicles, yeah. give me the candy, whatever. And dude, someone had, was handing out frozen popsicles. I saw people. that. Yeah. So good. Like that really. I thought about it. It really hit the spot. I'm not gonna lie. Also, they people had like Jello, like cold Jello shots, but they wasn't like shots. It was like just Jello. That's the first time during a race I've ever grabbed oranges and stuff like that to eat while while on it, and I think that that helped a ton. Uh, Oranges are so good. I feel like during a race. (laughs) I know. Do you, do you ever eat oranges? No. I feel like that's always like the perfect thing. I'm like, this is exactly what I want. Really? Not for me. I, I hate it when, when I probably had, ate like seven of them. When we had soccer and parents, you know, brought the post treat. Yeah. If you showed up with orange slices, I was like, I hate you. I hate your whole family. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, but you get wow. the geez. you get to have a mouth guard though. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, that's worth fun. it. Yeah, uh, bring me the packaged goods. <laughs> it is interesting. I will say, being at the where we were, because I've never been in a major where you're kind of just chilling well, uh, walking and like for you know extended period of time you can like have conversations with people yeah like yeah. it's actually kind of cool yeah, yeah. Like, so if we like, like who are you having conversations with like you just see some uh, believe in the run fan you're like hey how's it going blah, blah, blah. like just chat a couple words back and forth versus like running where uh, it'd be like, yeah you're like hey, bye. Just yeah. fly yeah. by them i mean new york we got we got to start pretty early on and so you're just go, go, go. And everyone, you know, could be passing you where we were. I mean, that's the party people. Those are, those yeah, are the fun. They really was. They were the fun people. If we would have started earlier, it would have been four hours of getting passed. Mm-hmm. This was like, everyone was in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, everyone's struggling. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, Molly and Molly Seidel gave us a shout out yeah. around mile 14. We were going cool. uphill. Yeah. No, it was, or, no, it, it, was, it was like 16 or 17. Yeah, yeah. Because it was up the it was up the hill that we uh, went and saw Jordan Trofat. That's 18. Okay, okay, 18. 17 to 18, yeah. 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 And Alex Hermanson was there. Give him a big hug. I yeah. saw him our, and donuts. Yeah. Oh, it was, I didn't see it. We did have donuts the, at the, one point. The donuts, yeah, we did have some munchkins. <laughs> the donuts from him were gone by the time I got to him. But, I mean, that huge hug was great. Yeah. And then later. You around, gave him a sweaty hug? Yeah. Oh, and wait, Aaron wait a second. I gave oh, wow. Aaron. He loved it. <laughs> so when you gave him a hug, Robbie wasn't there. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because Robbie gave him a hug, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, he gets around. And then, yeah. yeah he was well, he, he did say <laughs> that they we were the best hugs he got. So I like it. Yeah. Well, you guys have practiced all the day before <laughs> watching uh, I Think You Can Leave. Yeah. Um, and then later, around probably 23, 24, we saw John Levitt, and I was in shambles. <laughs> it was, yeah. Like, it, it was just a catastrophe. So uh, they, they offered Jared a beer, like a Corona, and he had an athletic, which I drank. And so I was kind of just like running with the athletic and drinking that, and then... But as we're leaving, <laughs> they gave Jared beer. He had like a sip and he, I don't even know what words he was saying. Um, and then he's like, oh, yeah, see you guys. And just like kind of just like drops his beer on the ground. You and hit, he's just you like hit the beer out of my hand. Are you sure about yes, that? 100 percent. Was I just turning around? You and, turned around and you hit the beer out of my hand. Okay. Is this like how you got bumped in the new balance? No, 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 yeah, no, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. For, for real. And I was like, I was like, don't worry, guys, he'll be OK. <laughs> Because you did look like you're in a bad. Spot. It wasn't. It wasn't New York City two years ago bad. Because <laughs> that was. I had no soul left. Like, I immediately just saw that yeah, image of you. It wasn't like that. It was like I. I couldn't catch my breath. Like tired for this. Yeah. Because um, I wasn't like that. I was so dehydrated. This. I don't think I was like, like stupid dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah it got brutal out there. Yeah. But we all finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's See, the right, the something. right and the left. That, I mean, that's fun. Um, you ran ahead. You said, you told me you're like, I'm going to get a video. Yeah. Thomas was like, I can't believe Robbie. I was like, it I looked like Robbie believe. waited. Like you did the whole run with him. Yeah. And then sprinted no, to yeah, the finish. Did, I, we were like we were watching like, from the like, finish what line. a dick. <laughs> I know. Which I was in my mind, I was like, well, I'm going to get a video of him. Like, Coming yeah. across the finish yeah. line. No, it was a nice yeah. gesture. The rest but of us as we're watching that. it, we're like, "Oh, Robbie just dropped him at the end." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Robbie waited till the till Blitz. Yeah, that would be well. No, originally him. I was gonna let. I was gonna be like, "Yeah, I'll just let him." Or like you go in front of me, but then I thought it'd be cooler. So did you get a good video? No, no that wasn't even a good video because I lost. Because oh, I, no. I, I, tur- I mean, I do have a video, but yeah. it's not, not like great. you were kind of more towards the middle when I was off the side. I couldn't. Well, get, I get think. A good uh, when I was running, I all of a sudden heard screaming from the right of me. And obviously I have tunnel vision. And then I turn and I see Danny and he's screaming at me. And then he got good video of you. Yeah, yeah. well, I guess so did Megan. I did Edison. not see that she was there. So I'm sorry. Well, we were like in a crowd. We were all there. Okay. Oh, I didn't see. Oh, I didn't see. I, the they were only, packed in there. The only person I saw was Danny. I did he, not. He Megan, stood on top okay. of something. Megan had already been back and showered. I came straight from the finish line and met them yeah. at Solis. Okay. So my my well, not to recap my entire race, but I do want to say no, I wanna, uh, yeah. to to Lynn, like he was the man. I, this is the second time uh, I've run with Lynn. We did uh, the Brooklyn half. We'll probably do the Brooklyn half again uh, here in May together. But it was great. We uh, we I felt like we were doing the plan, executing the plan, except for with the heat where it felt like I was getting faster, I was just holding on. So it wasn't like we were drop, we were supposed to go out at a certain pace, then sort of drop it and then feel out the hills. And then after the hills, I was like, I'll let it rip. And it was more like we ran and he was like, he was, Lynn could have stayed with the plan. Which he said he was struggling, but I don't think he was struggling. He looked like, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he looked he looked fine. Um, and so when we got through the hills, I was like, "All right, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to try to pick up the pace a little bit." And it was just like that. I had nothing. It was like mm. I I could I could pick it up a little bit on the downhills, but if there was a, even a slight flatter uphill, I was just like gassed. Oh yeah. So we ended up finishing together, um, and. It it was a maximum effort day, which is funny because the year before I ran it with Brandon and just kind of like goofed around, like just ran it easy. Mm-hmm. It was a couple weeks after Tokyo, so we're like, no big deal. Let's just do it and get it done. Had so much fun. The rain was great. We stopped and helped a friend who was struggling at the end oh, yeah. and got finished with the race. Felt amazing. Went out, party, felt great. This time, it, it, I like was giving it everything I possibly had. Uh-huh. And I'm not even sure if it was, it might be the exact same time that I ran this one. And that's what I was talking to Rob about. Like the course felt completely different than last year. Like even like where things popped up on the course felt totally different. Like I remember seeing like Farmingham and being like, this felt like a different spot in the other race. And it was rainy and cold the year before. And as much as I didn't want rainy this year, I would take rainy and cold again, hands oh, down. for sure. I, I have a question. I felt like I was so fit coming into this race that if we had had decent conditions, I think I wouldn't, wouldn't have had any problems at all uh, crushing my goal. Mm-hmm. But on this day, it was just, it was rough. But it did do that thing, and it's the same thing like when I ran with you in New York when it was hot. There's a certain bonding that, like, we did start to finish, and there's just I feel like there's just a certain bond that when you go through the 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 marathon experience with someone that it's just it's indelible. And I feel like, uh, you know, Brandon the year before, Lynn this year, you New York, like it's just I do love it when you find somebody who's trying to do the same. Uh, like goal 
And it should have been telling the picture we took before the race was you and Lynn, Blacks same and level, yellows. Yeah. and then Robbie and I next to each other, and that's <laughs> that's how it ended up. It you know it took a uh, nice. twenty one miles <laughs> yeah, to took, get there, but took a while. That's how it ended. And last year, I you know was able to be at that finish line and watch you guys. And I heard Ali Feller announcing that you guys were coming in. And this year, I knew she was announcing again. And I was like, oh man, I really hope. <laughs> She that I hear my name cro- like, as I'm crossing. There was a guy speaking, and it and I was like, okay, I'm not disappointed. I'm I was a little like uh, not that, then, that not about the guy, but yeah, I was jealous of you guys. Then we get across the finish line, and who's waiting right there but Allie Feller? So she mm. made up for the disappointment by getting an in person greeting, and we got announced, but I didn't get the photo op with with Allie and the previous year when we finished she came down after we finished and we got a picture with her and stuff so when I saw you guys I just thought maybe she came down for you guys and didn't come down for me and I was sad she came down for me and she said you don't want a photo do you (laughs) I said no I do not (laughs) all right final check-in look sometimes it's hard to stay motivated in the sport I mean, maybe you know that you're not going to be PRing anymore. Maybe you know that you've run a marathon before and you can achieve it. So what's the point of, you know, lining up again? So maybe like Robbie, you figure out another way that you can find joy and fun in the sport. And maybe that's helping other people, whether it's raising money for charity, pacing people yourself, or anything else that takes the ego out of it and lets you help someone else. So... If you're feeling like you're stuck or you're feeling a little unmotivated, maybe take a look at some other ways that you could get love for the sport and share it with other people. Wait, so Meg, so you did, um, so where did you feel, start feeling bad at? I mean, I, I knew it wasn't my day, like almost by like five, six, it was just like, I was just too hot, like too soon. Okay. Um, so I kind of, but I, I kind of went into this race without a real goal. Like I thought I could run a 250. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so that's kind of what I went out at. But I was like, this is probably not going to happen. So I just ran by effort the whole time. Okay. Which turned out to be a positive split by a lot. Ooh. Um, but yeah, and it's funny too, because even after heartbreak, the past two years, I have like flown the last six miles. Oh, wow. And I was like, all right, I can do it again. And I felt like I was running really fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was running a minute per mile slower than what I started at. Wow. And I was like, this is literally as fast as my legs will move. Yeah. But it feels like I'm going really fast. And I was that even was like weird thing passing about the some day. people, which I was like, what happened to them? <laughs> that was the weird thing about the day. I, I felt like I was running much harder than I was in the beginning. And turns out, it doesn't translate to pace. Yeah. But also, so I saw the Sitco sign and I looked at my watch and it said 249. And I was like, oh, I have like 11 minutes to run sub three and like a mile. Easy day. I guess I was not that close because I, I, I'm running down Boylston and I'm looking up at the clock and I'm like looking at my watch and it says 259 and the clock's already turned over to three, but I know I had like maybe uh-huh. 30 seconds and I'm like, you've got to be kidding oh me. Oh my gosh. So I, I think I'm sprinting at this point. It ends up being like a 650, uh-huh. but to me, this feels like a 540 right. in the moment. And so I'm running as fast as I can and just clocked under by like 10 seconds oh, or wow. something to run a sub three. Two, 259 high. Like Boylston last year, I was running with Brandon and Jen and we were yeah, side to side, mm-hmm. getting the crowd going, like yeah. having a great time. I, I just remember running down there. I like, I can't wait till next year when I really give this a shot and, and really push. I was dead tunnel vision, like staring at the finish line, just trying to will it closer to me. Like, just like, I know that if I keep moving, it will keep moving. Yeah. It was just such a different experience. Do you want to know what, do you, do you know your time from last year? Uh-uh. It was... You finished two minutes and nine seconds faster last year. So it was actually faster last year? Yeah. 
Holy cat, what, Wait, was, what was my time that? last three fifty two twenty three last year? This was three fifty four. And I felt 32. like I had so much in the tank. I was like, I could have crushed this race. <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, we could have taken another twenty minutes. And your off. training was awesome. My like, training was great. Like, yeah, it's definitely just the the heat was But like and like you said, it wasn't like just a hot race. It's we trained through the winter and this was the mm-hmm. first warm day we've run re- in. Re- literally. Yeah. The first warm day. Yeah. Well, you did that one after work where you're like, ah, it's like it. five miles, but yeah. <laughs> and I was like, this is the worst thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> but that like, that's the thing I've finished races and I've been like severely disappointed with how it went. And like, these were all the things that went wrong and it could have gone so much better. But even with falling apart, like at around 20, I was like, this was like a great day. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't hate the day. Yeah. Mm-mm. But, but I didn't hate the race either. And, and I, didn't, I've hated I don't races. hate I don't I don't hate the race. I just felt like this is this is what it was that day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and this was like the one thing that was just completely out of like your control. Yeah. So I'm kind of jealous. I'm looking at the London weather. <laughs> oh, Did you see what nice? this? 38, 38 to 50. Yeah, but could you I mean how early I guess how soon do you have to get there to then not have to potentially be like, well, Dude, it was London, jet lag. London starts in the morning. We Are got you suggesting there. we should book flights right now? <laughs> yeah. Right? We got there, I think, two or three days ahead of the race. and But we had sl- sleep trained ourselves before. Like, we were going to bed at, like, 7. Oh, that's right. And stuff like that. But... London's an amazing course. These people are going to have a great time. If the weather holds out like it is, you're going to see some people having phenomenal days. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. So, yeah. I, 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 it, at one point, I was deciding whether I wanted to do London or Boston. I kind of feel like there is a little bit of like, ah, yeah. it would have been nice. But at the same time, I love this training block. I loved working with people. I love doing the long runs with you, Jarrett, and, and getting that stuff done. Like, I wouldn't trade this for anything. Like, and, and you know, yeah, it's not the, the time that I would have loved to have had or, or shown off the workouts that I did, but yeah, it's okay. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was, well, A, thanks to everyone on the course who said hi. Yeah. That was like super cool. Just, there was a lot of people, mm-hmm. and that was awesome. Number two, Tom, Thomas and I were running together up mile 18 hill or something. And you were like, there's Meg's water bottle. Yeah. Like off to the side. And because it was your Nathan handheld. Yeah. And, and, I, and it had to be yours. It definitely It had to be. And I was so mad because I, I almost, I thought about it when we were about 25 yards past it. And I almost turned around and then I almost <laughs> turned around again. I kept thinking about it. And then I was too far gone. But I was like, it would have been the most amazing thing ever to like bring the bottle back and be like, <laughs> after the race, be like, oh, here's your bottle. Like found that on the course. I think I would have been like, no, throw that in the trash. I also I thought it was crazy. That, next training block. I also thought it was crazy that I threw out the, the handheld I was using mm-hmm. just cause it was so hot mm. and it's, it's latex or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so like my hands, I like, go switching hands, but there was like, the water bottle was getting so warm. Yeah, I got you. That I was like, this isn't worth it. Yeah. And I probably threw it out with like a quarter of the fluid still in it. Okay. And then I saw you finishing. I'm like, he's still holding on to his water bottle. Uh, Yeah, well, I also filled mine up and put scratch in it. Like, You kept yours, right? Yeah. Like you finished with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but what I, I'm saying. I, yeah. I filled it up again, like at mile okay. I don't know, 20. And whenever I, was with, whenever I was with Jared and put more scratching the best is that all of us were like when we saw you sprinting towards the finish and leaving Jared, we're like what a dick <laughs> that's the best i was so i was actually really mad too because i had <laughs> i had my phone i started my phone like before i got on a boylston just so i wouldn't ex- mess like so i had started recording then was just running with it but when i took it out of my spy belt at the last morton stop i stocked up on more i had grabbed like at least like three of them because uh-huh. i was just like stuffing my belt and then one fell out during that whole oh, me trying wow. to get my phone out. So I only Five ended bucks. with yep. two. I did Just have the two pennies. I, the two pennies we made saw, it back. We saw pennies, right? Where were we going? Was that, that going was to the, the bus? Walk, on the walk to the yeah. buses. So they made it back. They were all oxidized with sweat. Unfortunately, <laughs> though, Robbie had to give up like a whole pile of silver. Yeah, that was <laughs> like, phenomenal. Like Judas betrayed Christ before the race. <laughs> it was like a whole like pile of change that Jarrett spotted. Yeah, we were walking, I guess, to the porta potties before even getting on the bus. And we're kind of like single file trying to get through people. And 
I, I'm looking down to make sure I'm not tripping over anything. And then all of a sudden I see this massive pile of silver coins between the feet of this person. Mm. So I turn to Robbie and I'm like, Robbie, look. Like, and he ah. looks and he kind of, you can tell like his heart Cause flutters. It was probably like a dollar <laughs> fifty and change. And I'm like, I'm going to have to carry, I, A, I'm going to have to carry it with me the whole race. B, which is why someone left it there. B, but, I'm going to have to. Yeah, but who had a bunch of chains? It's like, oh, geez, I better get rid of this. That is a good I rush. I I'm going to have to crouch between this curse and be like, excuse me, excuse me. I would have <laughs> died seeing Robbie. All I wanted to see was Damn, Robbie. I'm sorry. I wish I'd given that to you, Jared. Ask this person to move out of the way so he could grab the coins from yeah. underneath, like, where this person is standing. You deserve that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I betrayed you. Um, I also, so I was shocked. Not shocked. I've never experienced a race where there's water stops every single mile. I think, is it too much? Like, I felt like it was just, I was running, stepping on uh, <laughs> water and cups. Dude, for, did you ever slip on one of the cups? Uh, I, I got yeah. some slippery spots. It was, and then it was not only that, but it was people slowing down and stuff like that to get it. And yeah. because water stops were on both sides every single mile, I always chose the left hand side, which was the further one away, and I was always like, ah, I kind of want it now. Yeah. <laughs> so that definitely slowed things down, in my opinion, a lot. I mean, how insane is it though that they were able to keep those water tables yeah. full? It's on wild. A day like that, because races like that we know of can't even keep like three water stops <laughs> yeah. full. No, but he's saying in the heat when you're getting that demand. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. it's yeah. so many people grabbing water. And but it was also it, like very necessary on a day like that. For sure. And, yeah. But the difference is also on a day like this, I was grabbing three cups. I was yeah. getting one to drink, yeah. one to toss over my head, and then another one to drink before I left. Yeah. Shout out to all the, the, the volunteers. Killing yeah, it. Did you pee, great. Did you pee brown at the end? Nope. Uh, I did. Oh, yeah. I definitely <laughs> did. Hardcore, yeah. Really? You were yeah. that dehydrated? Yeah, and I was drinking water at every... Every stop, literally every stop. No, I was I I did a really good job of following like the advice from Feathers, and I hydrated before. I think I was uh, well hydrated. That's good. And then I, up until mile twenty, I just did the water stations, and then I had my hand held with like some Gatorade and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. And then after twenty, I started uh, grabbing a Gatorade every once in a while. But I, I know what you mean by the one mile is it too often. And I would say yes and no. I think that on a day like today, we were stopping at each one. I think if it had been like a 50 degree day or 30 to 40 degree day, you would have skipped. You wouldn't have hit them. So you would have been able to stay in the center and, and Dude, gone That's through. why I'm telling you the water bottle is so money. Because for the first half of the race, I just ran straight down the center and could avoid all that yeah. cluster. I had my I had my hand held, and then I was just grabbing uh, cups and just throwing them on, on my head. Yeah, yeah, to cool you down. Yeah, yeah I get that. And for I was sure. running through all the stations for the, for the majority of the first half. I probably threw the first half. But then uh, because it was so hard to get, like, a full drink of water and run at the same time, uh -huh. and I was getting so hot that towards towards the end I was stopping every mile. To to yeah. make sure I was drinking and and getting that water down, like not like not like stopping stopping, but like slowing down enough to pinch the cup, yeah. drop the water back, right, jog up to the next kind one, like slow yeah. walk. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the person who I told Meg had the Pookie, you're looking absolutely fire <laughs> sign, yeah. yeah, solid for fans of Pookie and Jed on Instagram, yeah, that was pretty awesome. That is really good. And someone, another one was like, uh, I finally made it because Coach Bennett gave me kudos on Strava. I saw, yeah. Which, I think we were with each yeah. other at that point. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any, most of the other ones were, you know, general. Average. Yeah. But pretty good. The cheering was amazing. Um, we do have to plug a sponsor. Okay. Should we do sure. that? Yeah. yeah, do that real quick. Um, where are you going? The Amazon package. Oh, jeez. Oh. Should uh, we just wait for you? Should we open it on camera? Yeah, we can if it's a book for PDF. Oh, never mind. All right, so another sponsor this week is Say Sky. Mm -hmm. We love Say Sky. Yeah, where there is singlets and shorts and, well, everything, really. Yeah, they do have a, a recent collection called the Flow Collection. 
um, that that's pretty cool that just came out. Mm-hmm. I really like their uh, singlets. They just they fit well. They're performance wicking. They're light. Yeah. Um, they they I I think the fit is what I like the most because yeah. they just seem to feel. I don't know. They make me feel more athletic in a way. Yeah. <laughs> like you belong there. Yeah. I don't know. Some t-shirts are too baggy. Some t-shirts are too tight. Some singlets, same thing. Not not the, safe guy. The Goldilocks yeah, of singlets. I think so. Across the board, their fit is good. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and super light. So if you want to check them out, go to saysky.com. The Flow Collection's on there. All the rest of their stuff's on there. And then if you use code DROP15, you can save on your next purchase. I know it's not part of the Flow Collection, but they're like just their regular windbreakers. Mm-hmm. They're money. Yeah. Like they're, they're perfect for those days that are like 40 degrees where you're not sure, like, do I want to wear a jacket or not wear a jacket? Yeah. It's and good stuff. Yeah, it blocks the wind and it's light enough that it doesn't feel like you're hot or mm-hmm. wearing a jacket. For sure. Yeah, so check them out. Cool. So we finished the Boston Marathon, the 128th Boston Marathon. And there was some carnage along the course. Oh, gosh, yeah. And mm-hmm. at the finish line, for sure. Yeah. Dude, some of those people, I'm like, how many, who said, uh, who was talking it was about like, I think it was the most. How many people went to the hospital? Seven. 77. 77. 77, wow. yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot. That's a lot of people. And I mean, I don't know when you guys saw people start walking, but I saw people start walking at 14. Uh, I'm talking like oh, yeah, dudes for who sure. look like they're running 230s. Oh, I'm pretty sure there's people walking at five and or wherever we were. <laughs> um, yeah, but like like guys that probably are used to running like 235s, you. 240s, yeah. like just walking on the side of the street. Like that's disheartening. Mm-hmm. Like if you had a good day, like I look at Eric Floberg who had a great day. Yeah. Yeah, that guy killed it. And Nick had a great day. Yeah. And you're just like, how, what is it about you that you, everybody else is having a horrendous day? Yeah. Pat Blair, I know he listens. Yeah. I'll give him a shout out too. Here's the thing. I think you can get so freaking fit that it doesn't even matter. You're I don't know that you that, can. You can. You're that guy. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Matt Seidel, who ran in the banana costume, 235. Yeah. As not a goal race. Okay, but it's it's twofold. So I think you can get super fit. I also like your sweat rate and sodium loss is like genetic. Yeah, I that, think some I don't people think, are gifted, and they, the heat doesn't bother them. I don't sure. think it's the heat. I don't think it's fit because I think you can be a super fit dude and or chica. Yeah, and have like and and super, the heat can get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think sure. that if you're fit and the it's heat that combo. Like I'll tell you what, our buddy Gavin, he can run in ninety degree heat, and it doesn't it doesn't bother him. Yeah, yeah. at all. Yeah, as a matter of fact, really he, low sweat rate. he loves. He would love a sixty degree race day. <laughs> well, when I was standing there waiting for Jarrett, I was like scraping salt off of my yeah. skin, like a full layer. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to know at what point the guy ditched. If he did ditch that full purple suit that he started in. Yeah, there was a guy oh, like at a, the start line in a polyester, like purple, like a dress, like a suit suit. Yeah, that's like, intense. Why? What about the like the Marines, the military or whoever, guys, or whoever oh. were in fatigues? With did they run boots? the whole thing? Yeah. I, yeah, I saw them at the finish. Yeah, but uh, did you see them at the start? No. I mean, I'm assuming unless they. That's what I'm saying. Them. Like, well, no, no, they but, ran like, the whole thing. Are you sure they wasn't just like a Boylston Street thing? No, they ran the whole thing. Yeah. They had bibs on. I don't. I don't know, man. That's. I mean, they're tough. Mother effers. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I don't, on that day, in that heat. I, I don't get it either. Finishing in what time? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, there, I mean, there's some, yeah. Anyways, so then we got the medals. I mean, Did you see the London medals? Those next topic great. of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's, a, it's fine. It's a medal. It does a job. My biggest complaint is the ribbon. Yeah. No, I actually figured What's out what the, the ribbon? ribbon's for. I know what it's for. It's dumb, though. No, no. It's, so if you have it the way that you're supposed to wear it around your neck, then it it it's you have it. You twist this, so then it lays right on you. But say that you want to display this, you can take it like this. Do the flat. I didn't even know it velcro. The flat side like that. So it's now that I'm displaying it, uh-huh. I can hang it, and it doesn't twist. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't hate it as much now. Okay, but. Here's the thing. I know we're like, what's it matter? The metal, blah, blah, blah. People work so hard to get into the Boston Marathon. They raise so much to participate in the Boston Marathon. 
this looks like a regular 5K, 5K application. In fact, the 5K metal looked arguably better. looked better than this oh, metal. Yikes. So, like, I look back to some of the ones that you've gotten, Meg, that are drool worthy, like the three dimensional shiny gold unicorn cut out from the center. Like, the, oh, for Boston? Yeah, Meg has one that's like shiny. By the way, your first one was 2015, um, but it's shiny gold. The unicorn is three dimensional and like sitting in the center. It was large. It was beautiful. It was like a show. Oh piece. yeah, that's nice. Did you pull it out? Yeah. This this one, right? Yeah. No, that that's not even the nice one. That has a gold about. one. It has a gold three dimensional one. Was it shiny? There's one I that's like a glossy bad, gold. I think it's just a doll picture. All right. Yeah, that, that's that's nice. Yeah. So. This is for a lot of people. It's a once in a lifetime. The cost to go to this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's not even the nice one. It's twenty fifteen. Well, go go look at like twenty. Uh, it would have had to been twenty two or twenty three. Yeah, twenty two or twenty three. It wasn't twenty three because I know that one. Yeah, twenty two. Sorry, twenty two. Um, not results. Medals. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. The one with the yeah yeah that look at that that one. one's nice that one like oh, that's yeah beautiful. that's isn't that gorgeous that's a beautiful metal right <laughs> that was one maybe it's because the hundred twenty fifth like special maybe one. but it yeah. it's beautiful and think it's beautiful. about beautiful like how much does it cost to uh, for the entry of the race it's like three hundred bucks right yeah okay you're guaranteed hotels just jack you up that weekend yeah you're spending two k on a hotel okay by the time you're all done. Food, travel, mm -hmm. hotel, you're dropping at least, I'd say, five grand, if not more. Yeah, easy. Oh, man, that makes me sad a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm looking at these other ones, too. Yeah. Jeez. Just means you're going to have to run it again. Like, the, you know who's got a good yeah, okay. medal? The Baltimore Marathon. You know they're going to have to come back next year with a good medal after. They, they will. Although maybe you should wait until 130. Maybe they'll yeah. do something more because next year will be the 129th. Mm, yeah, you're right. 130. Okay, so we've had, I've run this one for fun and apparently I ran it faster than this time. <laughs> I've fun run, is fast. I've run this one with a beautiful training block and just the, the weather wasn't what I you would hope for. Mm -hmm. Would you run this race again? Uh, like ever? Training wise, yeah. Like say that, say that they're like, hey, we'd like you to come back and run it again next year. Is this is this a race that you would do, or would you maybe switch to a different spring marathon and just go and experience? Like if I run a marathon again, that where I'm trying to, to run a good time, I it would be very nice to run a flat race. So look at Chicago for once in my damn life. Yeah. yeah, dude, Chicago is Chicago is the PR marathon. If Chicago, yeah. you get a cold day in Chicago, but money. I'm, but actually, what Thomas brought up, I is, think this would be amazing. This, I want to. We could you could talk about it if you want. So I know that Robbie Robbie doesn't. You don't love the marathon as much as I'd say Megan or I love the marathon for sure. Yeah. Like you're like I like it. It's fun. I I do it, but you're not at like. You're not like, I got to crush this. Yeah, and I would say, especially at this point in my life, I'm just not willing to do what it takes to do to, like, get to that next level. Yeah. So, like, just time-wise and everything else. So I was like, what else would motivate you? And I was like, people love you and would probably... Put that on a poll. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> people would probably love the opportunity to be paced by Robbie for a sub-four marathon. Like... Robbie's goal, we would set it up, hey, for Chicago, mm -hmm. Robbie's going to get you uh, a group of people together. If you'd like, they're going to run 355 to 359 is the goal. Yeah. You're going to surround. You guys will get to hear Robbie's stories the entire time. It'll be like a live podcast. Oh. And then, I should care. I have a mic on me. Yeah. Yeah. And then- For uh, four hours. <laughs> yeah. And then and bring Ronnell with you. Um, and then, uh, like, think about how much fun that would be, like, the- uh, I would be into that. Robbie Pace group. That I mean, sounds fun. I think I'm at this point in my life where I really, like, to, if I'm going to run a marathon, I wanted to a be reason. mean, yeah, like mean something, like not just to be like, oh, I finished a marathon. I don't, yeah. That doesn't do it for me. Like, 
I don't run, like, I'm not like trying to run marathons and be like, I ran 25 marathons or even yeah. the majors, the six stars. I'm like, it'd be cool, but I'm not like, it's not like a goal. Well, yeah. that's like the a goal, thing. Goal. Like now I have the three U S ones. It's infinitely tougher. I mean, it just becomes like a huge, I mean, for anyone even traveling from outside the U.S. here, mm-hmm. as you said, going international, you're dropping 10 grand. Yeah, but yeah. here's what I picture. We get the Robbie Pace group, mm-hmm. get custom singlets for it. Ooh. Custom kits, we maybe get a shoe sponsor or something like that. Yeah. You take you take a group of however many people want to sign up for it. Uh-huh. Take them through. I mean, that's a weird thing, like, you also know that, like, motivational-wise, if you said, hey, we're going to go sub four, yeah. there's no way you're not. Right. Like, like you're, you're going to, like, three. you would almost have to get hit by a car. It would have to be, like, that crazy, like, a 95, something insane. Like, yeah. not any, anything remotely normal. Even, like, yesterday, that yeah. would be fine. Do you get your money back if Robbie rolls his ankle? Or is oh. that part of the experience? I think they're all no, there to you, hold me up. You yeah. get to roll your ankle okay. with yeah. Robbie. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we set up uh, obstacles on the course for it. And at one, you know what I'm going to do? At one station, I'm just going to throw bags of pennies on the road. <laughs> Good luck getting sub four now. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like the Mario, like people that have the Mario yeah. Mario signs, but in real life yeah, on when, the marathon. When, the, when your Mario Kart crashes and all your coins then, fly yeah, out. Yeah. That actually yeah. would be cool because that would put on you... You can't let these people down, so you're still going to have to train. To be honest, are you training harder for that? I know. Yeah. I'd probably end up. Well, yeah. I was thinking if I didn't, if it wasn't something bad, it's like if you did maybe something with one of the foundations that do the wheelchair racing. If I was, I was like, if I, if I trained to do a wheelchair, I'd be, I would PR for sure the next marathon after that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, because I would take it so seriously that I would be like, I had to, well, I that, had to go all That like, was my thought process. What would motivate Robbie to, yeah. To, yeah. Like, it's, be serious. And I think that if you knew that you're responsible for other people. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you can let yourself down, but letting down other people is, like, mm. infinitely worse. Yeah, no, you don't do it. Yeah. yeah. But there's also something about pacing people that takes the focus off of how you're feeling. Like, yeah. so even when you do feel, like, trash yeah. at mile 23, you don't as much because you're just making, you're, you're just focused on someone else. Yeah. I don't know. You'll have to ask Lynn. And I will say, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to shout out my, the coach I was working with, Greg, I, I felt like he really did get me ready for it uh, as, mu- as much as I could, especially doing the 50K. But I felt like I was had the fitness to finish it. Like, I didn't feel yeah, bad. Sure. So that was good. That's so great. I didn't, especially doing the 50K, like kind of how I did the 50K and felt good the whole time. I felt, aside from having a headache for half the race, it was otherwise. Yeah. Like, I never hit a wall or whatever. Yeah. You had a headache for Boston? Yeah, like probably half, at least half the race. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, when I got back to the hotel, I smashed uh, a scratch 1500 milligram pack and, a, and the Gatorade, nice. the Gatorade one yeah. that was in the. That was the grossest flavor, by the that way. It was terrible. Ugh. Orangish? No. It was, it was just like, gray. Oh, no, I had like a oh, no, watermelon. Oh, no, you had frost. That was trash. Yeah. Uh, I had like a that watermelon one. Me. The watermelon yeah. one was okay, but it was no element. No. And it is funny, though, Gatorade trying to get in on that, mm-hmm. on that, uh, trend that elements way ahead of them on now i find that everybody like i see all these ads is, this is a better product than element and i'm like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is it yeah yeah it's like oh you use monk fruit mm-hmm. how about how about for your whole like span of your business you were just putting a sugar drink with barely any electrolytes in it maybe you shouldn't have done that from the beginning yeah so you Gator, tell them gatorade is never going to be a sponsor <laughs> <laughs> not anymore Nailed that one yeah but it is true, though, right? Like, it's like yeah. Gatorade barely has any. Oh, we can't like, even talk about something that's coming out from Element that you're going to be super excited oh, about. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get excited. Very excited. New product coming I'll put it out. this way. Is it a Paloma, I, Paloma I fe- Element? I feel like I should be getting paid for this one because I've mentioned it so many times. Okay. Do I really not know about this? We can't talk about it. We'll right. tell you all about it. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of which, are we, have we wrapped this up? I feel like we're I, talking for it, two it's hours. Been, how long has it been? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we had a great time after. Poor, we did. Right? Poor Carl actually had to sit and listen Drinks to this food. one. I know. Hopefully, I, he was yeah, editing. Thanks this video. to the New Balance team that hung out with us and everyone who we hung out with afterwards. It was a lot of fun. We drank maybe a lot, but it was fun. Espresso martinis, yeah. frozen drinks, yeah. margaritas, you know, a lot of crazy Tom stuff. Tom said chicken tenders. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. great. You know what's yeah. great about uh, marathon being over? 
At three o'clock today, I can probably just. Uh, it's three twenty. I can already have a martini. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. You guys want a martini after this? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and oh yeah, and Thomas ordered off the kids menu at the, yes. hey, the fancy restaurant. I pulled a Jared. That's smart though. I like it. I, pulled, I wanted chicken tendies. Everything else. I saw your burgers. And I'm like, that's too complicated for me to eat right now. It's good. I need something that takes little to no energy. It was good. It was a good. It was a good idea. I don't. I'm not judging you for it. All right, we head off to Europe this Friday, so our next pod will be recorded. Next stop, Italy. Over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We'll fill you in on all that in our next episode. Yeah, but look for us in Venice, mm-hmm. and then look for us in Germany. Mm-hmm. Nuremberg. What's in Nuremberg? Ooh, you're going to be know? on trial Yeah, yeah, for war yeah. crimes. How are you going to have to trim that mustache? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be there. I'm good. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks to uh, Adidas for providing this team with bibs and hospitality. And thanks to our partners, ASICS, for hosting our ShakeOut run on Sunday, which is becoming a tradition. This is the third year we've done it, and it just keeps getting better. And then New Balance for both Friday and Saturday. We had a blast. Okay, hi, Ma. All right. <laughs>